and there goes the rocket. Where is it going? It's going to outer space. Hello, welcome to Wednesday's Crafters TV here here at Crafters TV. I don't know where I was going then at all. We are here for the next two hours, then we have a little break and then we're back for another two hours as well. And listen, I don't know what happened at all today. Today is really, in a lot of respects, completely unexpected, totally unexpected, because memos have gone round the whole of this company right now that there's one combination that should never appear together. And today it appears to be happening. So clearly, Craig, someone didn't get the memo in head office today because it's you and me today. I know. A lot of people have been saying, you know, where's Craig and Derek? Why are they never uh, together? There's a reason why we're never together. Yep. And uh, on the one day, probably when they shouldn't put us together with a launch and an incredible launch, they put us together. But if you've not seen, if you've not got your email, if you've not got your subscription email, let's have a look. I'm going to quickly show you. I'm going to hijack it just for a minute. And then Derek, let's take one of these three de-embossing folders. Brand new. These have got multiple layers. So we're going to go through it all very, very shortly. But I just wanted to quickly show you. So base cut and play. And I'm even going to add in my metal shim just to give that extra bit of oomph. That's going to come through. Oomph. Now, you know our 3D embossing folders, you know the multiple layers that we've got. We've got depth, we've got dimension, we've got elements where are actually embossed, you've got debossed parts, you've got so many different ones. Let's take a look at this. Satin silver card. Look <laughs> at that. Going right in for you wow. to see. You're going to be able to see that. Look at that into there. So that's some of the things that you'll be able to do. We've got six brand new ones in total. We'll go through them all very shortly and we've got a demo and my plan is to get a demo done with every single folder and our aquatins that we've got on the show as well. I've, t I've told him about embossing those metal shims. He's going through them ten for the dozen, let me tell you. <laughs> it's going to be a brilliant... Oh, hello. Bye. Back to you, Craig. Right to you. So you're coming back to me. Let's show you then. Hang on. Some of these folders just here. So check these ones out. You can see exactly what you're going to be able to make. So this is, look at that. There's a leopard print on that one just here. Look at that. Gilding wax that you can see just perfectly. But then on this one here, we've got the vine. You can see climbing, well, vine climbing ivy that you've got here. Great for all occasions as well as Christmas. Let's show you a few more before uh, we uh, hear Derek. Look at that one. So just quick, simple on the background with a bit of ink. And then we've just popped our sentiment within the middle. And then we've got the peony. Bright, bold, colourful if you want. Although you can just go pastel tones. You can go darks if you want. Then on this one here, just picking out the colour. Again, another one with the peony colour. We were just picking it all out. Then we've got, look at that one. The butterfly. Now what I want to show you with that one is we've got the butterfly detail, the wings, the bodies, but then look at all the accent detail in the middle of the wings. They're on another level, but then look at all these leaves that are just falling up. I say the leaves, you've got that, it's kind of like the dandelion that are floating up within the air. You've got that's just here, but then coming all the way down. So even more on different levels that we've got. Plain, simple, what reactive inks on the background. Now look at this one. So this one is doing your ink techniques, your watercress techniques. Again, another very simple one putting the ink onto the folder running it through that's all that we've done black and blue how effective that works but then if we go back onto the animal print if you've got your ultimate pro you've got your usb if you want to do all your different shaped cars you can be doing that one as well bringing in your stamps cut them down if you wanted to you don't have to just use them as a fool but then if you want to do your again shape cards you want to do your easel cards your vintage cards if you want to go all out when it comes to your actual folders you can do add your dies your embellishments your uh, 3d extras onto them or put them onto the back and that's all that you need to do i believe yeah i'm all right back now. again yeah i'm all right now sabotage i call it sabotage it's a craig laird takeover that's what it is he gave me dumb it batteries is gave me dud batteries just so it could get a little bit longer. Does work. And, and I've now sabotaged my own pack. Anyway, listen, in the meantime, should we talk Win It Wednesday? Because today is <laughs> Win It Wednesday. Always makes me smile that. On our Facebook page and on our Instagram, uh, you've got the chance right now just by commenting and let us, letting us know your favourite stamp or die. Looks all in pieces. Um, your favourite stamp or die, that's all you need to tell us on Win It Wednesday. So go to our Facebook page at Crafters Companion 
or our Instagram page, you've got a chance to win today just by commenting and telling us your favourite stamp or die. You've got the chance of winning either a £50 or a $50 voucher to spend here at Crafters Companion. That's worth doing, isn't it? Definitely. So get yourself straight onto our Facebook page or our Instagram. Uh, let's say hello to the people who are joining us. And thank you for joining us as well, because it's a very, very busy day, I know. Uh, Sarah is joining us in Melbourne, Australia, where it's just gone midnight. Good morning, Sarah. Uh, Nicole's with us. Rebecca from Austin in Texas. Cookie53 from Illinois. Ziva Morau in Maine. Marilyn Prince in Western PA. Philadelphia. Philadelphia, PA. We're dancing in the street. It's that, isn't it? Um, uh, roughly. Uh, Peggy on YouTube says, so excited to see a little bit of live show before work. And Ro Davis on Facebook says, good morning from Delaware Crafty Peeps. I tell you what, we've got something amazing for you today. Really, really fantastic launch of these brand new embossing folders. I know Craig has taken you through them already, but let's have, just have a little look at our bundle that we've got, which is all six of the brand new folders. And it's a UK launch today. I believe these, uh, have they been on HSN? Yeah, they have been on HSN. Um, but this is a UK launch. We even get it before the UK shopping channel. I know, amazing. Quite rightly as well as we should, Craig. Absolutely. I mean, let's get everything right. If you're here, it should be here first. It's as simple as that. Uh, so let's go through the embossing folders. The first one is called Gossamer Lace. Now, Gossamer Lace is something that you usually is used to describe tights and things like that, isn't it? Gossamer Lace. Um, but it's that lovely, lovely, it's almost a little bit like, um, like a paisley, isn't it? <laughs> Craig, you shouldn't have nodded there. You shouldn't know what uh, tights are called in the, you know in the stores. know what Paisley is. Yes, you do know what Paisley is. It's Scottish as at naught. It is indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the next one. We've got Lavish Leopard Print, which Craig is often seen in, in the weekends. Um, and look, beautiful. Lovely with your gilding waxes as well to go over this beautiful deep embossing, which is 3D, of course, which gives it that extra gorgeousness it really does next up is your vintage scroll um if i got the right one yes i have got the right one vintage scroll uh, which is beautiful lovely deep folders as well you'll notice that you can feel that real craftsmanship that's gone into both sides of those embossing folders as well and you can see the end result is absolutely oh look at that with the gilding wax on it absolutely brilliant the gilding waxes are on the show by the way 20 percent off but there are only three out of the five available at the moment king gold and silver are sold out and gone so you want to be quick now one of the best sellers that you are loving so far is peony bouquet which is this one which is beautiful really really nice i don't know whether you can see really effectively but in the background there's almost like a sort of checkerboard going on in the background of that one it's really really stunning that's in your bundle as well hang on a minute hang on stop everything hang on stop everything hello um are we getting all six of these for this little price here is that right johnny you sure has that been authorized that's all six for 32 pounds or 46 dollars right okay well i'll get over myself um apparently it's correct right here is number five which is called Climbing Ivy, which is beautiful. Think of all of the different color combinations you could do with Climbing Ivy. And again, it's got that lovely, it's almost slightly honeycomby looking and feeling in the background. It's beautiful, it really, really is. And finally, another one of your favorites. We all love a butterfly, don't we? This is Grand Butterfly, or Grande Butterfly, as it's, uh, as it's uh, written. Grande as in the uh, the size of coffee that you order sometimes. Oh, and I've I was got... thinking it was a singer. Grande, oh yes, Ariana. Mm -hmm. Ariana Grande. Maybe it's the butterfly dedicated to Ariana herself. Who <laughs> who can say? 32 pounds. Remember the last time you did that, Craig? <laughs> Let's not do it again. 32 pounds. $46. Now, there is a multi-buy on these as well if you want to grab them. Any two for £12 or $16, which is really, really lovely. Now, the other thing that we've got in the show today for you um, is the fantastic Aquatints. Now, we've got lovely little combinations of Aquatints and they're all on buy one, get one half price, which is really, really cool. So shall I take you through quickly through the combinations because the Aquatints do sell out really, really quickly. They're absolutely gorgeous. They're so, so effective. Um, and they're just luscious to paint with and to color with as well. So first combination 
is afternoon tea, which gives you teacup, macaroon, and biscuit. Oh, it's are they upside down? Are they? Well, there you go. That's the Australian ones you see, just for Sarah in Melbourne. There you go. So there's afternoon tea, which is your teacup, macaroon, and biscuit. Oh, I was watching the Bake Off last night. We have a, we, do you Oh, have that, that was on last night, yes, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Very, very good. If you've never seen the Great British Bake Off, it's an amazing series. Um, this is your Falling Leaves selection, which is Smoked Quartz, Olive Jade and Harvest Moon. Then we've got a bit of glitz and glamour going on there, which is your Aquamarine, Amethyst and Pink Garnet. Then we've got Metallics for you, and Metallics is Onyx Black, Sterling Silver and Spun Gold. I have this in my collection and it is beautiful, especially the Spun Gold because it's really effective. Then we've got Perfect Pastels, which is Moonstone, Cosmos and Rose Quartz. Really soft, pastel selection there for you. Then we've got Shades of Spring. Oh, we can't wait. Although it is sunny today, I have to say, even in Newton Acliffe, it's sunny today. Shades of Spring, which is Pink Champagne, Moonlight and Soft Jade. Then we've got Summertime and the living is easy. Solar Red. Emerald green and blue topaz. I didn't even get one clap from anyone for that lovely, lovely singing. Well, it has to be good to get a clap. Oh. Well, cheers. Thanks, mate. Thanks for that. We've got, we've got four hours together. I will get you back later for that. I uh, have no right. doubt. This is, <laughs> this is vintage chic um, sage pig. No, not pig, fig. <laughs> it's sage and it's fig and it's peony. Sorry, I nearly made pig. Although you could make a pig from that colour, couldn't you, Peony? You anyway, the final selection is Winter Warmers. Uh, and that's Starry Sky, Holly Leaf and Red Berry as well. They are on a Bogger Hub, which is buy one, get one half price. I say you buy one. You get one half price. You do. You was paying attention. Uh, good. Right, here is your blending collection right now, which we also have in the show. I wish, I wish I'd take this seriously sometimes. Uh, your blending collection has so much in it as well. This is really, really amazing value for money. So if you haven't yet got your square or your round blending tool, um, here you've got it with so much more. You get the brayer, which is brilliant for applying your ink and making backgrounds out of. You get your mini spritzers there as well, the, the fine spray misters. You get the mini blending sponges. You get a mixing palette, which is the thing at the bottom, which looks like a snack tray. Looks absolutely brilliant. That's a mini palette. You, plus you get the square and the and the round tool with the refills and you get a craft mat as well and a partridge in a pear tree oh that was good enough then good fabulous 30 pounds or 40 dollars uh next the gilding wax we only have three colors so we have the antique gold 20 percent off at 8.99 or 12.74 we have the gold Gold, always believe in your soul. And we also have frankincense. Oh no, Renaissance. Here is <laughs> Renaissance gold. That is there for you as well at $8.99 or $12.74. So king gold and silver, I'm afraid, are sold out and gone at the moment. Right, 32 pounds. Let's see what we're chatting about today. I, we were thinking of a question for you today um, as well, and I can't remember at all what it was. Oh, I know what it was. I know what it was. I hadn't even, haven't even discussed this with Craig yet. Um, but if we, were, if we were talking about decorating the house for Christmas, because here in the UK, we go into lockdown two, the sequel, which you know is gonna be rubbish, um, from tomorrow, uh, from to yeah, tomorrow night. Uh, UK goes into lockdown for a, a few weeks. Don't worry, we'll still be here. Um, and I was thinking, right, okay, well, let's all decorate the, the, the house for Christmas much, much earlier. Let's have a much longer celebration of Christmas, which I know, Craig, you will never object to. No, absolutely. Nope. I've got it planned in already. Fabulous. So, best Christmas track for when you're putting the tree up. This is a very specific occasion. When you're putting your tree up, what is the song that you must listen to when you are putting the tree up. That's what I want to know in the comments today. Um, and in the meantime, I, I have no idea what Craig's may be. I know he'll share, um, but we'll go into our first demo with you telling us what the track is for putting up the tree, Craig. So the track that I always put on, and it's an alternative version of my favorite one ever. So my favorite one is, um, can't even remember the name now. <laughs> I can't Ella help, Fitzgerald. I'm 
It's Ella Fitzgerald and um, I like her, her version of uh, Christmas Baby Please Come Home. But when I'm putting up the tree, I do like a bit of Bubbly and I like his version as well. It's really, really upbeat and fun and I love it. It's nice to just put on. And then we do put, put on a lot of the, uh, the old classics as well. You've got to. Bit of Bing. A must. Bit of Bing. Nat bit of Bing. Cole. Absolutely. Yep. yep. All bit these of Mariah. Ones. Love them. I, I, every now and again, yeah, just, but I just tend to listen to her, you know, the, that famous one, you know, I don't really listen oh, to a lot of her. Christmas. I love Celine Dion's Christmas album. Of course, I know that's a good number of years old, but that's a good one as well. Just love Christmas songs in general. And absolutely, not this weekend, but the following weekend, I'm off. Two days I've got off over the weekend, so that's when mines are going to go up. Two days, uh, two days, two weeks earlier than usual. I thought, let's go for it. We need something to make us smile. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. We do. I, and I was going away on the 9th. Uh, for a whole week down a holiday cottage down at the seaside or whatever that's been cancelled right now so on my birthday which is the 10th the tree is going up that day instead yes yes, yes. good for you absolutely Definitely. you could be putting the tree up music on and coming in and watching us and then when we have our hour break do a wee bit more and then just as well because i actually put it on my facebook page and i'm going to say it to you guys as well you know because we need something to make us smile if we see uh, anyone's tree up if you think if you're one of those that think mm, it's a bit early <laughs> if you think that just don't think that just think oh, that's lovely how nice is that we'll all get in the festive spirit yeah hashtag That'll be, be kind exactly <laughs> so we'll right, do a bit of thinking do a bit of ink and we'll do a bit of embossing as well. So what Fair. we're going to do with this one is we're going to be using the lavish leopard print. I'm going to use this one first because this demo is relatively simple. And uh, to be fair, all of them are, but all of them are using different techniques. So this is quite a simple one we're going to do. And then we're going to use the fallen leaves with the aqua tints too. So these ones here, you are getting the harvest moon. We're also getting the smoke quartz and then you're also getting the olive jade. So what I'm going to do first and foremost is we are going to ink this one up. So I've got my spritzing tool. So this has just got water. Again, all of these are on the website as well. The bundles, check them out. So I've just spritzed it just with water. It's water colour card that I'm using because we're going to be laying down with a lot of water. Then I've just got my paintbrush. Again, check these out. I believe we've got them on the show as well. Yes, we have. You'll find them on the uh, Shop the Show. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Harvest Moon and then let's actually use Smoked Quartz. And then I'm just going to give them just a bit of a shake. There's no sparkle of that in them, so you don't need to worry about making sure you've got that sparkle all the way around. And then let's just take our lids off. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay down the lightest first, so the orange or the Harvest Moon. So I'm just going to just give that just a nice coverage all the way down. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flick it around because I want it to be a bit darker at the edges or at the top and also at the bottom. And then it gets a bit lighter as it comes to the middle. So I'm just going to actually keep going back and forwards, just laying that colour down with my paintbrush. Oh, so Craig, I've yeah. got a, we've got a bit of fly in the ointment, apparently, uh, according to uh, Mira Iso on YouTube, who says, uh, Derek, we do Christmas decor. Be uh, oh, sorry, before we do Christmas decor, we do Thanksgiving. Now, that's the end of November, I think, isn't it? I think it's at the 20th. Third or the 25th. So are you decorated for Thanksgiving in the same way? Do you have the Christmas tree up for Thanksgiving or is there a different kind of decoration for Thanksgiving? I'm just a simple Englishman. You'll have to educate me. Drop a comment in. It would be interesting though, you know, whether you maybe just keep it kind of like fall themed and that we call it autumn and then you go into your Christmas decorations. That would be a pretty good one to know yeah, if yeah. you do decorate or if it's Christmas themed as well. And is there a Thanksgiving tune for while you're doing your yeah. Thanksgiving decor? That would be good to know. Yes. So I've just gone down just with the uh, Harvest Moon on that one here and then I'm just going to go back in with the smokes qu Smoke Quartz because it's a bit of a darker tone and then all that I'm going to do is I'm just going just along the top just there and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back into the other end just there because I want each end to be slightly darker and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to water up my brush again and then all that I'm just going to do is just going to go back in from top to bottom and then we're just going to get kind of like that deep to light shade as we go within the middle so let's just do that one again if you want to go back with uh, more deeper tones then you can do you can go back over the top just to get that color down but then what we're going to do now is we're then just going to bring in our heat tool so i've got mine good to go now if you leave these to dry naturally they will dry flat 
if you use a heat tool, then what will happen is it will curl. Although all you just need to do is just lay something heavy on top just to flatten it out and it'll be absolutely fine. So we're just- I am, I am available uh, 30 out of the 31 days of the month. 30 out of but you want to lay something heavy on top of it. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> you're not heavy. I'm heavy enough. No, you're, you're heavy enough the to same build that. or not. A what? We're kind of the same build or not. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, if you, if, you, if you squint your eyes after a very, very heavy <laughs> night of, uh, of uh, eggnog. Yeah, maybe. Great. I think you're slightly more slender than I am. And taller, if, if truth be told. I think I'm taller. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm taller. Yeah. Um, but you know, just what you just saying there, I've not actually tried eggnog before. Yeah, I haven't either. I don't know, does it taste of eggs, eggnog? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's Lemonade, like I think we put, or what's it we lemonade. call it? Oh, we don't call it eggnog, we call it... Oh, we call it, um, oh, what oh. do we call it? What do we call eggnog here? Oh. Advocar, Avocar, Advocar, something ad like that. Ad Advocar. Advocar, it might be a brand name, so other brands are available, I think. Advocar, we call yeah. it. It's yellow anyway. It's it's yellow. It looks like penicillin, doesn't no, it? Yeah, yeah. That's what puts me off, I think. It's the colour. Or do I am wearing this shirt. So. A snowball, some people call snowball. it. Snowball. Yeah, a snowball. Does that have coconut in it? No, no, no. Do you know what? I'm, just, I'm thinking of the, the comedy. I know you've got it in the States. It's the royal family. And I'm oh, thinking yeah. of the Christmas episode when yes. uh, Barbara says, do you want a snowball? That's what <laughs> it is. <laughs> That's such a good, uh, if you ever get the chance to watch it, do. Um, it's called The Royal Family and it's spelt R-O-Y-L-E. So don't mistake it for watching something about the Queen and Buckingham Palace, because you'll have seen all of those. <laughs> but The Royal Family, R-O-Y-L-E, is a brilliant comedy series. Bit of a fruity word here and there in it, but it's very, very funny. Very, very funny. Very, very love it to bits. So I'm just taking that excess off just onto there. Now, because these water-based, you can see how even I've just got a little bit of uh, water. Now, that's just a little bit. So what that actually has done is uh, full bleach effect. So it's actually pulling the colour up. So what I'm going to do is I never intended to do that technique on this one, but I'm going to do it just so that you can see. And you'll actually see as well, it actually blends in with Derek's shirt today. It does, actually. It does. Do you really, know what that really looks does. like as well, um, Craig? It looks like the surface of a of a brand new, you know, the, the, the coffee shops have got their crisp Christmas cups out now, haven't oh, they? Oh, they do. But that looks like it could be some kind of, um, you know, sort of uh, orange chocolate, hot chocolate. It does, special, doesn't, it? doesn't it? Yeah, it's brilliant. It's lovely. It really, really does. Yeah. So you're flicking water at it, aren't you? You're not just making a. You haven't. You haven't got anything stuck to your hand or anything. No, you're no, no, no. Not having, not having flicking my hand or twitch or anything like <laughs> that. What I've just done is you can just spritz straight on. But if you want to get nice puddles of water, I'm just spritzing onto my hand and then just flicking. And then straight away, already you can see how it starts to resist the colour. So the longer you leave it, the bigger the impact that it's going to be. So what I am just going to do for this one is taking a bit of kitchen roll and then I'm just going to dab that excess off. So if I dab that off, so if I just do a dab, 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 not the dance, but just the dabbing with the kitchen roll, and then we'll pull that one off. Look at that. Oh, that's awesome. Look now that. that that looks a bit like, again, something that we're, we're not going to partake in so much. Do you know what that looks like? You know when you see um, aerial footage from above yes. from an active volcano yeah. where it's spitting out the lava? That's what that looks like. The great thing about aquatines is it makes everyone an artist instantly, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely it does. Absolutely it does. And you will never, ever, ever get the same effect uh, every time you produce something. So if you try to do this exactly the same, you're going to get a different layout of colour, a different effect of colour, and then you're also going to get a different effect when it comes to the full bleaching effect. So then what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to close that one over, just popping it into my 3D embossing folder. So I'm going to bring in my plates. So because they're five by seven, they're going to go through your junior. You guys in the state side, it will go through your midi when you get it delivered. Us here in the UK, the midi is coming. And when you do get the midi, it will go through them as well. And that's all hang, that I'm just hang saying. Hang on, hang on. Sorry, rewind, rewind. Midi, midi. I know I've not been here for a week, but midi, midi. Yes. Everything that you know and love when it comes to the mini, but in a six inch mouth. Oh my word. I know. Mm -hmm. When can we have it? 
So it, when it do is, we get it? It is coming soon. That's all that I'm saying. It is coming soon. It launched on HSN the other day, so you guys stateside will start to get it delivered very, very soon, any day now. And here in the UK, you, it is coming, I promise, and that is all that I'm, I generally am allowed to say. So it's going to go through your midi, but of course it's going to go through your junior, your large Gemini. So base cut and plate. And then I do like to put my metal shim in. I always like to do that because it really gives that embossing real intense look. So I'm just putting my metal shim and then our plastic shim over the top. And we're just running that one through. Craig, while that goes through, I've just got a quick yes. question. Quick, quick, quick question, if I can say it. A quick question from Tempting Tatiana. <laughs> Could you make your usernames a bit more simple, please? Uh, Tempting Tatiana uh, would like you to talk through the difference making blended backgrounds with aqua tints versus a water reactive ink. How, what's the difference? I mean, how, what is the is a method difference? Well, really, because you'd start to, with the, like, things like your aqua pots, your sparkle pots, or your, your pens even, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be laying them down, giving them a wash down. So whether you're using, obviously, your brush with water, whereas it comes with your water reactive, you're laying them down with your sponge, your blending foam. Although, to say that, you can still apply the aqua tints with your blending foams. But the thing is with your actual water reactive, you're caught, because you're actually laying down the color, you're blending them in, you're making it really quite subtle, you're blending lots of colors in together. Again, you're doing it on a dry format, and the fact of obviously the cardstock's dry and the foam's dry, when it comes to your aqua tints, your sparkle pens, it's more of a wet format that you're going down on because you're either wetting the card or of course the actual element that you're using, the aqua or the sparkle is a water so it's uh, the aquas are like you know painting painting effect whereas your actual um what reactive you're just blending them down with a blending tool does that make any sense i think so yeah because yeah. I, I think actually when you're when you're going down with the aqua tints um like you're feeling like an artist it feels like you're painting do you know what I mean? mm -hmm. when you're doing it with your water reactive inks you're, you're kind of dabbing aren't you or, or you're putting it on your mat and then you can brush it on um, but actually, there's a great satisfaction, I think, in the in the wetness of the aqua tints. You know what I mean? Because you Absolutely. can really slosh it on, and you're still going to get those amazing results, aren't you? Yeah, you really, really are. You know, and you can use kind of like similar colours when it comes to water reactive against aqua or sparkle, but you're going to get a completely different look. You know, whether you're doing obviously the wash effect, the blending effect. So they really are fun. Mix and match them if you want. Nothing stopping you from mixing and matching, and it's actually something that we might be doing just shortly. Uh -huh. Yeah. And there's nothing wishy-washy about aqua tints nope. either, is there? You know, sometimes when you when you look at inks and whatever, you think, yeah, I can see that that's going to have a little bit of colour at the top, and then it'll it'll get lighter and lighter as it goes down. I mean, this goes down like solid, true colour from the first to the last stroke, doesn't it? It does, yeah. And then the the more you keep going down with the the water, obviously it gets lighter, it gets lighter, it gets lighter, mm. and it keeps going and going and going. So you do get so many different shades. Look at that. Now. I'm just going to keep bending that just so we can kind of just see the effect. However, what I am away to do is I'm then going to bring in my King Gold. I think actually we'll we go King Gold or Antique. No, we'll go. Yeah, King, so, so King Gold sold out, right? Use here. Renaissance if you've so got So let's go for. I've got Antique. Antique, that's my fine. My Renaissance seems to have disappeared, so we'll find another one. So <laughs> we uh, will just kind of lay this down, just using the fingers, and then we're just going to lightly over the top. And then what that's going to do is that's then going to pick out all of that leopard print, all that effect. So because we're, we're doing it lightly, what's happening is the antique gold gilding wax is just sitting nicely on top of all that embossed area. However, because it's 3D, instead of it just being one area that's uh, risen up, you've got multiple areas. So some is really quite prominent into the foreground, some's kind of halfway, some's right into the background. It really is such an effective folder. And I think this really does show off really well when it comes to the leopard print. It's lovely. While you're, uh, while you're rubbing away there, um, Craig, um, Mary, uh, while she's decorating, she loves listening to Boney M, uh, which is good. I wonder which one it will be. Ra, ra, it could be that one, couldn't it? Or it could be um, Boney M, Boney M. Mary's boy child, of course. Thank but you, Johnny. Yeah, that's the only Johnny Boney M song yeah, that's I know. the only Christmas one, isn't yeah. it? Mary's, Mary's boy, boy child. child. Oh, they've got loads of songs. I've got albums at home, Craig. I must bring it in. And you, can, you must do. You can enjoy all, all the torture. Um, it's uh, amazing. Uh, lots of people saying that Thanksgiving is fall themed. 
So actually, so my shirt would be good for Thanksgiving then, I take it. And it's the last Thursday in November, apparently, Thanksgiving, um, which is brilliant. Uh, Jarmaine says on Facebook, wow, love that. Have to try it myself. Um, Sea Gods on YouTube says, yes, Craig, I think the wet, ver dr wet versus dry explanation was the, was the best. Yeah. Uh, it's true. So that's the difference between laying down your aqua tints on a folder, on a background like this, um, versus doing it with your water reactives. You can do it with both. It's just, I think it, I, I don't know, it, there's, there's a certain satisfaction. I've done it a couple of times with aqua tints when you've made a background and it's like, ooh, like I have no artistic talent whatsoever, I consider. And I was like, w -w 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 oh, it works just the way the guys do it here in the studio, which is brilliant. Yeah, and I absolutely firmly believe, and I genuinely mean this, when it comes to water reactive inks, when it comes to blending and laying down colour, our Harmony water reactive inks really are the best ones out there. But the thing is, if you feel as though you do have trouble laying down the colour, when it comes to aqua tints or sparkle pens, when it's water based, the thing is, is you don't need to worry. You literally just throw down the colour. That's all you need to do is throw down the colour and then whether you do any specific techniques or you blend the inks out, you don't need to worry. It's still going to look uh, really effective no matter how it looks. So any, all... qu any questions you've got for Craig along the way, by the way, just um, yeah? pop them in. Sorry, I spotted a silence, Craig, and I thought, oh, I better jump in. I was reading the comments, I thought actually. you were going to say something, so I thought, no, I, be no, no. I better be quiet there. He so. left a little gap for me. You know I'll always <laughs> jump in it. Um, no, you carry on. It's absolutely... I was 26th is Thanksgiving uh, as well, by, by the way, and it's Sharon Sweeney Stupar on Facebook. It's uh, Sharon's birthday on the 26th, so happy birthday for the 26th. Does that mean you're a fellow Scorpio like me? See, Scorpios usually go into hibernation at this time of the year, Craig. You're lucky to see me. I usually go into hibernation in November and then come out. Big straw box, big cardboard box full of straw, and then, and then you'll see me again in March. Why is that? Well, it's just, you know, we are, I don't know. Really, when you're born in the winter months, I don't know, there's something about, you know, just wanted to be cosy and warm and in front of the fire and in, in a big pair of slippers and a big gown and warm and indoors, I think, basically. Look at that. That's awesome, isn't it? There we go. So straight away, all that I just done to finish it off was add a sentiment and a bow. But look at that again. Your uh, background has come from your folder. We've just mm -hmm. done a bit of the ink when it comes to the fallen leaves, aqua, um, aqua inks, and then aqua tints even. And then we've just used a bit of gildan wax over the top just to pull out all of that 3D embossing. That's fabulous. That little bow on the top of that card, by the way, um, has contained with it a little clue to a big event that is coming up later this month. I've said too much already. Um, don't ask me for any more. Even Craig's looking confused. Can't tell me I know before you. Oh my word. I've got some gossip that Craig hasn't. How's that happened? Right, let's talk about these embossing folders then. We'll break them down one by one as well. There is the big bundle there for all six at £32 or $46, but we're going to break it down like the kids do into their individuals because you can buy one uh, on its own for $6.99 or $9.99, but there's a multi-buy there to get two for 12 or 16, 12 pounds or $16. So let me walk you through them one by one. First one is called Gossamer Lace, which is really, really cool. So you can see in the background of Gossamer Lace, you've got this very, very fine kind of diamond. Actually, yes, shall we, shall we, shall we zoom straight into to those bits? because we know what the packaging look like and we know what the folders look like. We'll zoom into the actual designs themselves and we'll see their full effects then. So here is Gossamer Lace. Now in the background of Gossamer Lace, you've actually got this fine kind of, um, it's like a diamond crisscross. It's really, really good. And that's the great thing about these um, 3D folders is that you've got that detail, that smaller detail that sits in the background. And then you've got that lush kind of paisley detail that jumps out into the, into the foreground as well, which is amazing. So that's Gossamer Lace. That's that's the first option. Then the one that Craig was, wow, now look at that. Now that's just on a plain background there with some, um, that sort of looks like it's a, a gold cardstock. Um, so there is some texturing in the background of that. I don't know whether you can see that quite clearly on the shot. Um, but then you've got the leopard print, which uh, leaps out into the foreground as well, which is really, really beautiful. So uh, we'll change the detail. Oh, uh, they're all, oh, they're all individuals, aren't they? So let's change Gossamer. There you go. Lavish Leopard Print is the second one. The third one is your Vintage Scroll. Now, this is really, really lovely. Um, this, oh, 
this, you almost want to sort of lay it down. And in the UK, I don't know whether it still happens even here in the UK, actually, but we used to do this thing with wallpaper where we'd have a border through the middle of the room. It was called a dado that you would have very, very grand decoration on, you know, on, on Edwardian and Georgian houses that had all this lovely, lovely detail. And because these are five by seven, remember, of course, they're gonna make, they're gonna make the front of a card, aren't they? Because they're big enough to make the front of a card. Then one of your favorites, and I'm not at all surprised. Oh, it's lovely to see that up close as well, isn't it? That's the Peony Bouquet. Now that's the most popular on its own and in the multi-buys um, as well. And I can see why completely. The detail in that is just exquisite, isn't it? Um, um, and it's wonderful. When you feel it, it's got that lovely, lovely texture to it as well. So it's got that tactility to it when you're touching it too, which is lovely. Um, oh, it's one of my favourite words, Johnny, tactility. Um, next one is, <laughs> and Johnny's congratulating me on my use of words. Um, then we've got, good word, Derek, that. Good, right, marvellous. Put that on my report, please. Could you feed that back to management, please? Good work, ta tactility. You can have that. You can teach that to Joe as well, if you like. Um, here is Climbing Ivy, which is wonderful. And again, it's got that lovely lattice work in the background. So think of butterflies and birds and flowers and flower pots and characters that you could put into that. Think of a great big sentiment going across the center there. You've almost got an instant, well, you have really, haven't you? It's almost like a creator card on its own, this embossing folder, isn't it? So that's Climbing Ivy. Another one of your favorites, and the final one to show you individually, is the Grande Butterfly. And isn't it beautiful? And actually, this would be a real candidate for your colouring as well, I think, because you've got the very, very fine, intricate detail. Because even when you die cut a butterfly, um, you'll only get a certain amount of detail. This has really, really sort of absolutely fine point detail in the lace work of the wings. And then at the bottom there, you've got dandelion clocks, which are just sort of blowing in the wind. And that's against a really, really beautiful textured um, background as well. So individually, they're $6.99 um, in the UK or $9.99 in the US um, or £12 uh, for two or $16 um, for two. So the entire collection is all six of these fabulous uh, embossing folders. So you get all of them for £32 or $46, which is really, really good. Now that saving, I worked out all the savings as well. So that's saving you nearly £9 here in the UK, which is really, really good. Um, it's saving you $13.70 in the US, which is brilliant. So that's almost the cost of, of two, isn't it? Which is really good. If you're a Platinum member, by the way, your price is I mean, you know this anyway, if you're logged in, but if you're a Platinum member, that price goes down to £25.60 in the UK and £36, uh, sorry, $36.80 in the US. Now we have got those gorgeous brushes as well. They are nylon brushes and we've got them in three sizes for you today as well. So we've got the half inch one. They're all the same size, no matter, uh, sorry, they're all the same price, regardless of the size, which doesn't happen much in life, does it? Um, half an inch one there is uh, $1.99 or $2.99 and so is the three quarter inch as well which is really really good. So that's a bigger wider brush, great for those backgrounds um, like the one that Craig was making there. And then we've also got a shadow brush as well, size eight. Now what's the difference um, between a, a, a brush and a shadow brush then um, Craig? So Shadow brush, what you're able to do is you can get into a bit more detail or a bit uh -huh. more area of, say, the embossed area than you are with a larger one. Don't get me wrong, you can still get into fine areas with the larger brush because, if I bring mine that's still a bit wet, because you've got that straight cut edge right along your actual, uh, actual brushes, you can still use the corners to get in the edges. However, to create a shadow effect, a deeper shade, if you're using a deeper colour, then that's going to be the perfect brush for you. Fabulous, thank you very much, sir. Right, let's see what you're saying because uh, there are lots of you chatting away uh, about absolutely everything. Um, oh, Tempting Tatiana says, my YouTube name comes from a now closed ice cream shop named Temptations. They had amazingly inventive ice cream sundae concoctions. Took friends there in my 20s, promptly dubbed me Tempting Tatiana. Well, there you go. I'm so glad you shared that with me. Thank you very much. Um, Joy on YouTube's got a Craig, a, a, a Craig for you question. A question for you, Craig. Uh, I may have missed this, says Joy, but what do you do if your wax gets hard? 
So what you can then do is, if you, even if you just wet your fingers, so just dab it in a bit of water first and then start to just uh, reinvigorate your actual wax. Don't pour water into it, just even just a little bit onto your finger and then just start to uh, kind of like blend it in on itself and it will start to reactivate it slightly. Just remind me as well because um, 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 Denise is asking on YouTube, which aquatint selection did you use to make your first background, was it? So I used the fallen leaves. Fallen leaves? Yes. Right, okay, let me find you that as well because you might want to grab that. Remember the aquatints are on a buy one, get one half price. There is falling leaves, that's the selection of three that you get in your uh, falling leaves uh, selection, which is lovely, which is smoked quartz, isn't it? Um, what's the other one called? Oh, they haven't got their names on. Yes, they have smoke quartz, olive jade, and harvest moon. It's on the back, Derek. See, it's written there. Uh, all you have to do is read it. So that's the selection. So you just used the used the orange one, then, didn't you? I did. That? Yeah. So I Fabulous. used uh, the two of them that I used were the smoke quartz, and I no, never. I used the harvest moon and the olive jade. <laughs> Wow, I'm glad you asked now. <laughs> that was as clear as mud, wasn't it? I'm good. That's exactly what we're here to do. Um, right. Um, oh, Astrid on Facebook says, you mean blown vinyl wallpaper, Derek? Yes, I probably do. I'm too young to know, you see. I'm just coming up to my 24th birthday. <clears throat> Excuse me, there or thereabouts, roughly. Um, Kathy on YouTube says, does the gilding wax rub off or does it dry permanently, Craig? So, well, it will dry. If you were to then say you were to actually, just like I said before, if you had a bit of water on your fingers and then start to reinvigorate it, then it will, you'll see it start slightly move. However, you know, what to do is, and you maybe actually, because I didn't explain it after that last one, I rubbed over it just with a bit of kitchen notes, kind of like just buffering it, and it's just giving that extra little sheen to it. Karen on Facebook <laughs> says, I have a six foot tall turkey as part of my Thanksgiving celebrations. I'm taking that as a decoration and not something for the table. Um, um, I hope you so, because I think that would be quite some mean feat, wouldn't it, to try and find a turkey that was six foot tall. Can we have, um, a, can we have a picture? That'd be taller than you, Craig, wouldn't it? it yes, would we, be. we would love to see a picture of that, wouldn't we? Absolutely. <laughs> Studio at Crafters Companion dot... Um, dot whatever it is good dot co dot uk that's it studio yeah. at crafters companion dot co dot uk thank you very much craig you see we're the wrong side really aren't we we are well you should be that side and this side i should really it should really right um so we've colored the covered the colors that you used in the last demonstration let's do another one let's do another craig craig so, what we're going to do with this one is we're going to use the vintage, vintage chic for this one here. <laughs> What's wrong with us and today? Uh, I know, I can't get the words out. Honestly. But for this one, I'm just using the peony, and we're also going to use the fig for this one. So keeping it very... Actually, will we? Uh, yeah, I think I might change it slightly. <laughs> I'm going to change it. I'm going, I'm going to go off piece to what I originally created. Let's use the peony, and we'll also use the sage for this one. Right, that's vintage chic, by the way. Yes, if you it want is it indeed. In your aqua tint collection. Just to say as well, within these ones, you get little pipettes as well. So you're able to use these ones. We're going to use it within this uh, demonstration as well, so you can see what you can do with them. So I've got my cardstock, so it's four and three quarters by six and three quarters. Is that watercolour card, Craig? Uh, it is, yeah. It is indeed. Fabulous. And then all that I'm going to do is I'm just laying down the actual uh, cardstock with water. So I'm just laying that down with my brush. But then what I'm going to do is just to show you how you can actually use your blending tools to lay down the colour as well. So what I'm going to do for this one is let's just take a little bit of that excess water up at the side here. So we're going to take that one off. And then all that I'm just going to do is I'm just going to take the lids off. I'm going to just pop some of this colour down onto my glass mat. So all that I'm going to do is on this one I'll use the pipette and I'll just pop just a little bit of colour down there. And then what I'll do is I'll just take in another pipette. I'm, I'm positive, I will double check, I'm sure it's a couple of pipettes you get, get in each one. I think you get three if I remember sure it's three, right. Yeah, isn't it's one it? yeah. for each pot, I think. That's right, yeah. Not, three, not that one I've ordered lots one. of sets or anything, but... Uh. <laughs> and then uh, I bet you have as well, haven't I you? I have, yeah, yeah. yeah. I love my aquatints. Honestly, serious, it's the best. I'd never used ink before that uh, because I always thought, oh, it's going to feel like fountain pen ink from when I was at school back in the, you know, 1800s. Um, 
but it's so nice, isn't it? And it just spreads around like you would not believe. It does. It spreads so easily. You get a nice coverage. So straight away, just with that one there, my blending tool, I've just uh, laid that colour down. And then with the actual sage on this one. So again, all that I'm doing, not added any extra water of that to it. I'm just going straight over my cardstock. And then I'm just going to lay that colour down like so. And then what you can do, if you so wish, if I then take my spritzing tool which is just here i'm just going to go back to uh, this one here the peony and then i am just going to spray a bit of water onto my mat and then i'm just going to pick up some of that water just there it doesn't matter if you've got a bit of color to it because all that i want to do is just kind of like blend the two of them in and then if you do have any excess from your uh, actual foam brush, that will just wipe off once you've actually uh, Oh, is that the little um, bristles that are so, coming off onto the yeah, paper? Yeah, it's just some of the excess that comes off on uh, the phone to, uh, yeah. to start with. Yeah. So all that I'm just doing there, it's just kind of like blending the two of them in. And then what I'm going to do is we take again that part off. And then I'm just going to start to, I'm just going to spritz a bit of water along the top just along the top on that one. I'm going to use my pipette and I'm just going to pick up the colour and then what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to hold it and then I'm just going to do, so I'll just try to see so that you can see, so I'm just going to just drip a bit of colour along the top and I'm just going to let that fall. So then what's happening is because I've spritzed with the water as well as the, as well as the ink, it's starting to just pull the colour down. Oh. I'm just going to wait just a wee moment. You can then enhance it a bit more if you've got a straw, if you want to add uh, by blowing extra air into it to pull it down, you can do. Don't worry if the colour comes all down the side, you know, all kind of like adds to that effect. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn it around and then I'm just going to do the same at the top. I'm just going to spritz just with a bit of water just along the top so you're kind of getting like a it's almost like a sort of tie-dye effect it is here, isn't that's it? exactly what it's like and then i'm just adding that color as i go along there and then all that i'm just going to do is i'm just going to let that uh, fall or just let that you know nature take its course if you want to help it a wee bit more then again just add just a tiny tiny little bit of water and then again, that will then start to help it just fall down. Do if we have got, I'm just trying to see if I've got anything that I could blow through. Uh, have I got a pen? No, probably not. Probably not. But you can do it. If you've got something like a, a straw or something like that, you can then just enable it just to blow, just forcing the colour down. But I'm just actually going to leave it like that. That would work well if you've got any of the past uh, Sarah's signature, you know, in, uh, Enchanted Christmas collections, or maybe some of the Merry Magic collections from Hunky Dory or that. These would look good to create your own backgrounds. So then all that I'm going to do, let's just leave it for uh, time being like it is. And then I'm just going to just dry this one off as it is. So we're just going to just lay that colour down. And then we're Ooh. just... I've just realised what that one looks like. It's a little bit like... It's a little bit like stalactites and stalagmites, isn't it? Looking through like a, a tunnel. It you is, know, if you're, if you're looking out into a little bay there, look, it could almost be an ocean. And then from a different angle, because we're all looking like this and like that at yours because it's not square onto the screen, but it also looks a little bit like Neapolitan ice cream. You know where you get the chocolate, and the strawberry and the mint <laughs> all together, all blending oh, together. Great. Looks lovely. It looks really nice. I always eat the strawberry first. Do you know how hard it is just to get strawberry ice cream on its own? Oh, it's so, yeah. so hard. Yeah, really hard just to get strawberry ice cream on its own. Well, as you, as we saw, and, and I know folks in the US, you, you don't get this show uh, in the US, but um, the Great British Bake Off was on last night and it was, um, they did an ice cream showstopper last night. I won't tell you anything, I no spoilers, um, but it was very, very good indeed, yeah. They do get it, uh, they do get it in the US. It's one of their number one shows each week. They oh, get... do, you, do you get the current series? Yeah. Oh, yep. I beg your pardon then. The Great yep. British Bake Off, um, have a look at it because it's, mm -hmm. it's really, really good. Yeah. The reason I know that is Erin, uh, who's recently joined us from uh, the States, she adores the actual uh, the the show as well. Bake oh, it's, Off. It's awesome. Yep. It's so good. I'd never go on it, but, you know. So I'm just uh, heating that one up. So I'm just turning that one over now just to dry from the back as well. Oh, did I just hear that... Um, I, I did. I think Karen I heard that too. Karen's turkey picture has arrived. 
Oh, we're just processing it now, Karen. This will be interesting. Can't wait for this. I can't wait to see what Stick this looks around. like. Stick around. There's a cliffhanger. But you, you'll see straight away from, well, I'll say straight away from when I added the uh, colour to when it dries off. You know, it does get a bit more subtle, so it's not overly bright and in your face. Obviously, it helps that we've just uh, watered it down slightly. So what I'm, I'm just going to finish here. When it comes to embossing, do try and ensure that your cardstock is fully dry because then that just enables the fibres to uh, actually kind of emboss into uh, all the nooks and crannies of the folder. So what I'm going to do is we'll just do just a little bit more just on the back. Tell you what, you could frame that on its own and it would look like a work you could, of art, couldn't wouldn't you? it? You could, absolutely. Gorgeous. You really, really and could. And that's the power of the ink, isn't it? Yeah. That's it. And again, as I said earlier on, you try this technique again, you'll get a completely different look. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get the same effect when it comes to blending the colours. And equally, you're not going to get the same effect if you actually, actually drip, actually, actually, actually drip down the ink using the pipettes. Right, Craig. Yes. Right. Do, do you want, do you want folder first or turkey first? I tell you what, if, if we run this through yeah. and then I will be laying a bit of colour over the top and then when I lay the colour down, We'll show the turkey as okay. well. Okay, good so we'll by do me. that one. Yeah. So with this one here, I'm going to be using the butterfly. So I'm going to use the grande butterfly on this one here. So again, let's just run that one through. Now, I'm just going to pop this one in like so. So because it is 3D, it is now just going to be using our base cutting, our base cutting plate, magnetic, and our plastic shim. So I'm not going to be using the metal shim for this one. So again, this one just shows you that the actual uh, layers of the uh, sandwich for your folders, cutting plate, magnetic, and plastic shim, and the metal shim is just to give it a little bit of extra embossed detail. So if I then pull this one off, now this really, really needs the silver, but it's, I know it's sold out. So let's go for a bit of, we'll try with the, what have we got? Do you know, do you know no, something not, I am? Not much, Craig. <laughs> that's, the, uh, that's the problem at the moment. Not I'm, much. I'm going to use the silver. Yeah, because go on, go for it. I know well, many people will have it. I'll have it, absolutely. Well, do you know that, um, you know that colour combination that you made the, um, the previous background with the leopard um, on it, Craig? Yeah. Um, sea Gods was asking which colour you used and then went, OMG, how lucky. That package of ink came in her Spectrum mystery bag. So she how had it, so she didn't need to order it, which is fantastic. So she can try and recreate that first background that you made earlier with the, uh, with the leopard print. This is going to be wonderful, though. You watch how the butterfly will just le literally leap out at you in just a moment. Well, awesome. do you know what this is actually going to do? And this is a mistake but I'm going to go with it anyway. It's not really a right or a wrong side, but where the ink is, I've actually had my car start the other way, so we're actually getting the debossed effect. So the emboss is on the other side, but then this is just going to be able to show it. So I'm not sure if you'll be able to see the white oh, emboss. Craig, have you, have you mixed up your top and your bottom again? So what I'm doing is on this side, yeah, we're getting the debossed side, but then what that means is if you then just lay down your gilded wax, yeah. what's going to happen is the gilded wax is actually going to pick up all of the debossed area and then the actual area that is intended to be embossed is then focused down into the background so it gives oh, you a it. completely different look fabulous so it just means that you're actually for instance right here we're actually using the gilding wax on the background instead of the actual uh what, what i keep they're not flowers they they're, they're um, dandelions, aren't dandelions, they? Dandelions, yeah. Dandelions, I, I thought yeah. they were uh, dandelions. They're the, yeah, the little dandelion clocks. Yeah. Um, Deborah, uh, not Deborah, sorry. <laughs> Every time I go to read a comment, they jump. <laughs> um, someone said about adding salt to your background uh, making as well. Ray, it was, on Facebook, said you could add salt to your background making technique, could you? That's a demo coming up. Oh, okay. Oh, it's like you've seen into the future. I might Ray. actually do that one next. How bizarre, isn't it? We do, we do this next. quite often, don't we? You do. It's quite spooky, isn't we it? We do indeed. Mind you, it's, it had just been Halloween. Um, we got a lovely Halloween gift, didn't we, this morning, um, Craig, from lovely Julia. Who, we did. Uh, looks after all the products uh, behind us. In fact, I, sh I should show the, the trick, shouldn't I, Johnny? I'll, I'll come and get it in a moment, uh, and I can show everyone Julia's Halloween trick on us. 
So there is, so that's the that's the back, so that is the emboss side, and I've just gone over with a bit of silver gilding wax just so you can see. But if I turn this around, now I'm gonna I'm gonna just stay really still, and then all of those areas that the silver gilding wax has picked up, that is what we would then call the deboss. But look how effective that is. It still works. So never think of it as being the wrong side, it's just you're getting the debossed effect instead of the embossed effect. So then all that I'm going to do with this one is uh, I'm just going to be layering this one up. The card blank that I've got is 5 by 7 but just on the bottom I've just created just a bit of a stepper just by using my uh, Ultimate Pro. So we've just created that stepper just there and I'm just going to layer it up. Right, fabulous. While you're doing that Craig, we've got a, we've got a date with a turkey. We do, I can't wait it's to see It's a 6 this. foot turkey. I, I mean, I, I, I can't even imagine. We haven't seen the picture. I mean, uh, Johnny and uh, Adam in the gallery have seen. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Look at this, everyone. Look at this. This is from Karen. I'm, do you know, I'm quite glad. I'm quite glad that it is a decoration. It's one heck of a decoration, isn't it? Oh, that's six like something turkey. that should be in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Yeah, and, and here it is in its full glory. It's huge. That is isn't it? huge. And that sits outside the house for Thanksgiving. Wow. That is absolutely brilliant. I love, love that. Oh, I want That's that. That's incredible. I want one of them. I love it. Yeah, I want one. Absolutely. We'll, we'll get Sarah onto it on her, on her next trip over. Could you uh, squeeze a couple of uh, six foot turkeys in your case for the way back, please? Thank you. <laughs> Never mind Sarah's case. I'll be going in mine. Yeah. Sitting outside my back garden. Yeah. Actually, it would look quite nice on my deck. Sat on the decking. Yeah. yeah. I'm actually thinking, funny enough, because last year I put three trees up in my house because it was my first year in my um, new house. Yeah. So now I'm thinking, well, I need a fourth one. I need a real tree for my decking outside, don't I? I think that would look really nice. Yeah. Or a nice fibre optic, maybe, Craig. <laughs> be, going to, be going in the bin if anyone got me one of them. <laughs> There we go, we can see now. what his problem is with fibre optic. It's not, it's not Christmas with a fibre optic tree. Uh, I apologise to anyone that's got them. <laughs> I know some people need them. Where's I the spade? I know some people need them, but to me, it's not Christmas. There we go, so there we are. So we've done that just with the inks. We've used the gilding waxes or the silver and we've just actually done the deboss side instead. That's beautiful. That's very, very good. And a happy accident as well. It so was. that means that you can do it either way round and still get an amazing result. So you get to keep your job, Craig. I do. Uh, which is amazing. <laughs> Even though, again, you mixed up your top and your bottom. Um, it doesn't make any difference. Oh, I was going to show you the trick or the treat. So, uh, so Julia, who was, who's been looking after us, uh, all the products and everything backstage, she put us a little uh, bag of sweeties together for Halloween. So they were real sweeties. They were real lovely uh, treats. But there was also wrapped up in, in a bit of uh, uh, aluminum uh, was the tra uh, with the tri uh, trick, which was a Brussels sprout. Do you have Brussels sprout? You have Brussels sprouts in the, in the US, don't you? They're disgusting. They're horrible. They're awful. They're the kind of thing that everyone goes, no, you're all right, thank they you. They need to go in the bin like fiber optic Yeah, cheese. they are the last thing on the table. You know, you know when you've eaten everything on the Christmas table, there's still a bowl of sprouts there. Although I can tell you a way of making them edible. What you do is you shred them and you fry them like you're stir frying with some cranberries in there and a little bit of red wine vinegar and that makes them, that makes them uh, edible. I mean, you still get the problem afterwards. Like, you know the problem with sprouts after sprouts, don't you? We won't go there. Uh, anyway, oh, oh, close the, close the windows. It's a very windy day. Uh, anyway, right, what are we looking at next? Oh, let me, right, let's go through the options on these brand new embossing folders um, and talk about the most popular as well, because you are absolutely loving these. I'm not surprised, because they are really, really good. So let's go through all of the options, because the, the favourites have changed, and I think I know why. Um, so here is the first one, which is called Gossamer Lace, which is beautiful. There's a little hint of the paisley um, in there as well. And these are lovely um, flower heads. I'm not sure if it comes across totally on the screen, actually, because the way this, um, the way the, the, the wax is on there. Um, but you can see it's got lovely flower heads on there as well. So that's the Gossamer Lace. Then we've got the Lavish Leopard which is really, really um, cool. That was the one that Craig did his first demo uh, with a little bit earlier on, and that's awesome. And that would be just as good as well, the, the method that Craig used where you um, 
waxed the deboss as opposed to the uh, emboss as well. That would look super, super cool. Then after Lavish Leopard, we've got Vintage Scroll and Vintage Scroll is absolutely gorgeous as well. A really, really lovely design. It's got that very flock vinyl that's it's got that flock vinyl look but it's very very classy isn't it imagine again if you want to add flowers to that if you want to um uh, again nice big sentiments across that you've got a ready-made card very very quickly haven't you with something like that making one of those backgrounds with the inks as we've seen already then we've got what was your favorite the peony bouquet um, for people that were ordering before the show one of the most popular if not the most popular i love the background again it just shows you the true effect of these 3d folders that the, the peonies themselves sort of leap out to the front of the image and then you've got this textured background as well which is really really beautiful now your now most favorite is this one and i'm not surprised at all because you're seeing the versatility in this one we talked about this one before this is called climbing ivy so you've got almost that sort of it, it's a little bit like a sort of a trellisy look in the background isn't it um, and then you've got these two corners of fabulous ivy leaves um, and imagine what you can add to those imagine all the different ways that you can color these ivy as well i mean this is just um on a on a, it looks like a Centura pearl, doesn't it, in a deeper green, and then it's gone over with the gilding wax in gold as well. The texture and the level of detail on that is beautiful. Remember, these are on a multi-buy as well, so you can buy them one by one at £6.99 or $9.99. But the best, I mean, if you're not going for the big bundle, go for a multi-buy of two for £12 or $16. This is the one that Craig was doing his last demonstration on. And can you see the intricate lace work on the wings there makes them almost transparent which is really really cool it's lovely i wonder actually can you um use these embossing folders to emboss the image into acetate Craig? yeah you can do because i think that would look lovely on top of this so a layer of very very fine acetate embossed in the same way across the top of something like that would look quite awesome wouldn't it it would and then also if you used it on vellum and then what I would suggest, if you put in your metal shim when you emboss a vellum, what will happen, it will give you kind of like a white work and it will actually start to pierce some of the areas which make it look even more incredible. But talking, talking of parchment and vellum, you lead me nicely on, Craig, uh, because you know um, that Crafters Companion, um, we have our stores as well. Um, so we stock um, quite a few different companies um, crafting products in our stores as well. So that has allowed us this afternoon on the second show this afternoon on Creative Cravings has allowed us to do a little bit of a clarity clearance. Now, if you've ever seen Clarity Stamp as a company, they are amazing. They've got the groovy system with the parchment papers and we've got a clearance of Clarity Stamp products coming up in Creative Cravings this afternoon. If you wanna go ahead and shop the show, you can right now. They're very, very low stocks, by the way. And what I think, to be honest with you, I'm gonna put myself out on a limb here. I think we're gonna have some of the lowest prices for the clarity items that we've got that you will find in the UK today. So I would go and check those out right now. You can go and shop Creative Cravings already um, from our schedule, but that's later teasing that out of me, Craig, how dare you. Um, let's talk Aquatints again, because they're so, so popular. I'll take you through all the combinations that we've got. And remember, they are a, a bogger, a bogger hope, which means buy one, get one half price. I say you buy one. You get one half price. You do, Craig. Um, so afternoon tea is the first combination there. And afternoon tea is teacup, macaroon and biscuit. Then we've got uh, falling leaves there, which is smoked quartz, Olive Jade and Harvest Moon. And that was the one that Craig made his first leopardy background out of. You know, the one that looked like it was um, lava out of a volcano. Then we've got Glitz and Glamour, beautiful bright colours, gemstone colours as well. So you've got Aquamarine, Amethyst, and you've got Pink Garnet here as well, which is beautiful. Amethyst, of course, always going to be popular with us. Crafters Companion Purple. Uh, then we've got the Metallics. And the Metallics don't show up so well on these boards, I have to tell you. Because when you see spun gold in reality, I don't know if you've got it over there, Craig, have you spun gold? Um, but when you actually see it laid down, it's absolutely stunning. Stunning with a capital S, it's beautiful. So really give that your consideration because it's a really, really lovely color. Then we've got Perfect Pastels. 
Perfect Pastels is your Moonstone, your Cosmos and your Rose Quartz as well. I think that's going to go beautifully um, with that lovely butterfly folder. It's going to be awesome with that. Then we've got Shades of Spring, which is Soft Jade, Moonlight and a bit of Pink Champagne. No one's going to say no to that, are they? It's absolutely beautiful. Remember, um, each one of the items um, is three inks which is brilliant. So every selection you buy is three inks and then they're on a buy one, get one half price, which is fantastic. Um, so that's like getting six for the price of three, isn't it? And they're big pots actually, considering the strength of them and how far they go. And, and, and generally you will water them down as well. Um, solar red, emerald green and blue topaz makes up summertime which will be a beautiful one. I think it'd be lovely for that vintage scroll design, would be lovely for that. Then vintage chic, which is so, so cool. And that sage, fig and peony, uh, which is beautiful. That's the selection that Craig used on that last background uh, when he did the butterfly. And then we've got winter warmers, which is really, really cool. You've got starry sky, which is that lovely blue. You've got holly leaf, which is the green um, and red berry. So you might be thinking Christmassy colors. It's never too late making your Christmassy backgrounds. That's just given me an idea actually. So $12.99 or $19.95 each, but they are buy one, get one half price, which is brilliant. So basically you will get, you will get two lots for, oh, hang on, we've got something else. We've got something else to show you, have we? Oh, Thanksgiving decorations from Katie. Oh, so here's, so you kind of decorate for Thanksgiving like we do for, it's like a continuation of Halloween, is that right? That's like it, isn't it? Yeah, using our kind, kind of, of yeah. autumn-y. I love the next picture because you've got a little couple there in the background as well, haven't you? It, do you know what it reminds me of? We, we had a thing here, uh, we, well, we have a thing here in the UK at the end of summer called Harvest Festival. I don't know whether you ever did that at school where at, at Harvest Festival, I can't remember what time of the year it was actually, everyone used to bring food and make little packages of food and then take them to church for the service for Harvest Festival. It looks a little bit like that, which is really, really cute. Right, Craig, um, we've got lots and lots of people who are loving this collection. Um, oh, Patty suggests on your Christmas trees, by the way, you can get a live one for your decking and then you can um, leave it out and you can reuse it. That's an idea, I might That's do that, idea, yeah. yeah. Could then decorate it for Easter time, come Easter. Yeah. Just decorate it for each season. Why like not? That. Good idea. Why not? Mm. Right, salt technique. We're going to be doing the salt technique with this one. We're going to be using the climbing ivy for this one as well. So there we go, it's the folder we've got just here. So what we're going to do first, watercolour card and my spritz tool, and we're just going to spritz it with water. You can lay water down with the paintbrush if you want, but the alternative is your actual uh, spritzing tool. So we're going for, on this one here, we're going for winter warmers. So I've got starry sky, and then I have got holly leaf, and then I have got, last but not least, I have got red berry. And then what I've also got is my three pipettes. So I've got this one here, this one, this one. So what I'm going to do on this one is I'm just going to, let's just spritz just a little bit more water. And Shannon's made a good point, Craig, actually on these inks. Of course, you can, you've, you've got your, your colours that are there already. But of course, yes, you can. You can make new colours by mixing. Of course you can. Yeah. Absolutely, you can do, yeah. So you can mix them yeah, with the three that you've got, or if you get the full collection, then start mixing and matching as well. You can do indeed. Entirely up to yourself. So I've got my pipettes ready just with some ink. And because I've just laid the colour down, what I'm just doing is, look at that, it's like an explosion of fireworks. So I'm just going to keep going. And the more water that you've used, the more of the effect that you're going to get. So I'm just going to really spritz that colour down. This always reminds me of, um, we have an art show, and I'm sure you'll have it in the US as well, because it started here, it's called Art Attack. Oh, Neil Buchanan. Where you literally throw inks and paints at things, and, but he does it on a massive, massive scale. Uh, but this looks like the same kind of fun, Craig. Oh, it really, really is. You will potentially get a bit inky, but it's so much fun. So I've already got my colour already laid down. I know it looks like a bit of a mess at the moment. Then I'm just using my uh, salt. So it's uh, coarse, coarse salt. So you need them to be really quite uh, thick, the granules, because yeah. uh, fine salt will just disintegrate. So this is like sea salt, I take it, it is, is it? Yeah. 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 So I've just actually 
laying that one down so nothing specific I'm just wanting to make sure I've got a good covering afterwards when this is dry keep a hold of the sea salt because it'll be nice and coloured you can use it for your shaker cards all these different uh, techniques yes. if you want to so don't be afraid to lay the salt down so we're just going to lay it down we're going to get that down and then what I'm also then just going to do just to give it a bit of a helping hand as we're just going to spritz a little bit more of water then what you would do is you would leave this to dry so you leave it to dry either for a couple of hours overnight uh, preferably if you can I'm just reaching over because I spotted another glass mat a clean one <laughs> so just to save a bit of time then we're just going to move these out of the way and then I can pop in my nice clean glass mat and then I do have one that I've already done so let's move that to the side. If you're wanting a glass mat, by the way, uh, we have them on the show uh, later on this afternoon. And we've got a bit of a deal on the glass mat, haven't we, this afternoon? I forget what it is. Yeah, it's on today, isn't it, on the latest show uh, on Creative Cravings. And we've got a little bit of a deal on it because, 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 because we're wonderful. Um, I forget what the deal is it now. I think it might be a twin. Yeah, 21 99 Oh, is it is it a UK only? Okay, well it will be on the show um, a little bit later on. It's a really really good buy as well. Usually, what I do, Derek, and I don't know why I didn't do it on this one, but I didn't, is I usually use my uh, wipeable heat proof mat from Spectrum Noir that we've got within the bundle as well. Ah, okay. So yeah. usually, you know, as you've seen, you can do it on your glass mat, but usually I would do it onto this because then what I can just do is exactly what I've done with the glass mat is just pick it up and then move it out of the way and then you can instantly move on to your next step. And can so you wash that mat? Yep, so even then let's just, we've got a bit of ink, let's just bring in a bit of ink so you can do all your techniques, everything that you know and love with your glass mat you can do with this one, do your heat techniques, do your uh, actual embossing powder, if you like to do your big thick granules of uh, embossing powders and do any of that sort of thing, if you like to do your own um, the words just gone right out of my head again. Uh, the embellishments, the it's like the clear embellishments. It'll come to me. It'll come clear to me. Clear embellishments. Anyway, it's where you need a lot of heat. You can do onto these ones as well. Shrink plastic. You can do all these different things that you can be doing as well. Um, but it, it will come to me. Um, oh, I can't. I cannot think. It, it well, I'll think after my next demo but it's just to show you just there you can just wipe it so it's wipeable no problem at all oh, and then cool. like you say you're good to go so what I'm going to do for this one is if I bring this one in that I've done earlier now I didn't put as many sea salt granules but all that you would just do is let it dry and then once it's dry so again this is dry so let's just pretend we've got the salt on mm -hmm. so you just bring it in and then all that you would just do is just rub your hands just to take all that excess salt that is uh, on the actual cardstock and then what you're going to be left with is these little specks where the salt has actually soaked up the ink and then it's just uh, obviously taken off but again your salt would all be nicely coloured so you can then use that elsewhere in your crafting but then there we go so it goes to show on this one here how I've not used a lot of salt but then on the other one that I did uh, really go to town with the salt to show you the different effects then what I'm going to do is let's bring in the climbing ivy and then we're just going to just pop this one in so I'm just making sure this one here is the emboss side so we're just going to be closing this one like so base cut and plate we're then just going to do our magnetic and then our plastic shim we are going to bring in our gildan wax we're also going to bring in water reactive ink we're going to use a bit of the smoke emerald as well as our blending tool so what we can do is bring this one into play now you can kind of see it I'm not going to spend too long on trying to let you see all the design but it will come to life in a moment so what I'm going to do is the smoked emerald just going to lay that color onto my blending tool and I'm taking a little bit of the excess off and then I'm just lightly going over the top and I'm doing it lightly so then therefore the ink is actually just staying on top of the 3d elements and what it's also doing is it's just staying on that very very top layer of the emboss it's not going into any of the little nooks and crannies that you've got within the actual uh, embossing but we're then just going to just finish off this bit here 
and then you'll be able to see how you've got a bit of the uh, the deep green color or the deep emerald and then we're just going to enhance that in a moment by adding a bit of the uh, gilding wax so even though you can start to see from up above how you've got the actual image just starting to pop through so if we then bring in let's go for the antique gold for this one and then I'm just going to lay the color down just using my uh, finger you can use your blending tool if you want but you do get a much better effect when it comes to your finger because it's a lot more easier to apply but of course if you do have uh, any issues with your joints or dexterity or that you can use the blending tools that's no problem so we're just going to go over the top and because I'm using my finger and I'm just using a little bit extra pressure What's happening is the gilding wax is sitting on top of the smoked emerald, but what it's also then doing is it's actually just uh, getting the wax into all the different layers of the embossed. So you're going to get that nice antique gilding wax on the layers, but the top layers is also going to give you a bit of darkness because we've used the smoked emerald underneath. So I'm just going to go all the way around these areas in the corner I'm just going to really intensify the color by using a lot more pressure. And then let's do a little bit into here. And then let's not forget the center because you've still got that crisscross design within the center as well. Craig, can you use these folders um, into, because I mean, some of them have more detail than others in terms of the intricacy, but can you emboss into um, any of our glitter papers? absolutely you can do there's really not a material that you can emboss onto you know okay. if you can then pop it through your gemini then or you know we keep saying gemini because gemini is our machine and yep. it does work best with that one because yep. obviously they've been produced and made and manufactured uh, to the best quality when it comes to the gemini but if you've got any other die cut machine out there as long as it at least fits your uh, five by seven folders then you can uh, pop it through no problem but yeah matte card acetate vellum glitter card uh, adorable scorable all of these ones you can do and emboss no problem so love it's really subtle actually that isn't it it is but then it just gives you that glitz of the antique gold if you want to go lighter you could use your king gold maybe use a bit of silver but then we've really gone for that intense color you know if you wanted it to be pastel then of course use the pastel tones but all that i'm doing with this one is i'm just going to use my tape runner oh craig i've just had a genius 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 idea you know i only have them once a month and i'm only here once a month so i'm gonna i'm gonna get it out there right now Imagine using this Ivy um, folder, just put a photo into the embossing folder, position obviously the person, the, the people in it, so they're in the, in the middle, the fold around them, and then add the gilding wax to the photo. I think that would work incredibly well. That would it? be really good. That would work really well. But then just a continuation of what you're just saying there, Derek. Mm. You know, don't just use them as your five by seven. You know, maybe use smaller bits of cardstock. Cut it down. Maybe yep. it's going to be half of that. But then why not take, for instance, let's say five by seven, use your nesting dies, cut one of the actual shapes within the middle and then run it through. Yeah. So then you can use it as a shaker card. You can use it yeah. as a frame as well. So you don't just have to use the full element of the folder. But I'm just gonna pop that onto my card blank. I love that background look because it almost, it looks like almost it could be a photo that's completely been defocused. Do you know what I mean? Uh, yes. Like it's completely out of focus. Like you could almost be looking into a flower bed there from a distance. You could do. And that's it, you know, by using the color as well as the smoked emerald, as well as the gilding wax, you know, your eye is instantly pulled into the emboss, but then you start to see the, the gold, you would probably initially think it is, it's antique gold. And then you start to see the colors underneath. So it instantly, it lets you see, uh, well, instantly it lets you see the design, but then what happens is your eye is then drawn in to all the different layers, all the different colors. Then it's drawn into the fact is, you know, we've got the tech in the background with the salt of course they're probably not going to know how you've done that yeah but there's so many things it's uh, it's a busy technique 
but you know it works it really does work some ones don't work quite as effectively if you're using lots of different busy techniques but that works really well and you can see i've made it a christmas card you know so it's a deep shade but a christmas card as well that's awesome and i have to say that obviously because of the way the studio is set up we're a long long way from each other uh, and actually I, I can see like all the way over to craig uh, which is right down the other end of the studio and it looks as impressive even from really afar. Do you know what I mean? It's really going to stand out from those other Christmas cards that are lined up on, on the mantelpiece or hanging down or however you display your, your Christmas cards. There's so many people saying that they're, they're going to have a go at that technique, um, especially actually that idea of having the mat underneath it and actually spraying onto the mat um, and then using that to be able to just pick it up and then move the mess away and just clean it up really, really simply. Let's have another look. Let's have was, another look. I was going to say, actually, again, it's a continuation of what you've just said, Derek. Yeah. It's also, it's an eye catcher. Now, you know when you get one of those cards where you're sitting on the settee, you're sitting on the couch and you're looking at cards that are up and it catches your eye and you go, oh, look at that yeah. one. Yeah. So you get up to have a look and then it continues. Each element catches your eye. So you're drawn in from all the different layers. So That's uh, it's so a good awesome. one. And that card would work for every occasion as well, it wouldn't would. it? Because of the colour combinations as well and the neutrality of the uh, of the embossing background as well. Neutrality, Johnny, there's another one. Gosh, you've <laughs> totality and neutrality. Oh, I'm out with all the big words today. Now, listen, um, Craig used a couple of things in his demo so far that it would be very, very useful if you haven't got to get them in this configuration. Number one would be the craft mat which is really, really cool. Um, and it does come in this Spectrum Noir um, bundle with the blending tools as well. So you do get that, which is really, really good. So that's the um, craft mat, which is non-slip and it's heat resistant and it's um, cleanable. Now that automatically, sorry, ordinarily on its own is $9.99. It's part of your bundle or $14.99, but it's part of this bundle here. With this bundle, you also get the palette, the mixing palette, which is really, really useful. So if you wanted to just drop little bits of the ink in there or blend and make different colours, as some people have said, um, then you can do that. That's included in this bundle as well. How much is that ordinarily? That's usually $1.99 on its own. Then you've got the braying tool. The braying tool is really, really good because that's like a rubber roll there, which is very, very easy to clean as well. That's usually $9.99 or $14.99 on its own. So actually, what have we got? We're, we're nearly there, Johnny, aren't we? Actually, we've got, let's have a look. Well, let's go for the, the square blending tool because that's one of the very, very popular ones, isn't it? So that's $3.99 or $4.95. So we're pretty much there, in fact, where we should stop. But actually, with the square uh, blending tool, you also get the extra 10 um, pads. So it comes with two already. Um, and then you will get the refill pack for those. You'll also get, I'm going to pop these down. You also get the round blending tool as well, which is fantastic. So you, you might well end up with your preference, but you'll also get a pack of the refills for that there as well. So the actual value on this, whereas you're paying 30 pounds or $40, it's 47 pounds 91 instead of 30 pounds, or it's $72.35.55 instead of $40. Now these are those fine spray misters, you know that Craig was using for all of the um, techniques to spray water onto the ink. You're actually getting four of those in this, which is really, really cool, and they stay nice and clean. You also get the little mini blending sponges, which actually they tend to have, they've, they've made their way into the makeup world recently, haven't they, these kind of sponges? Um, but these are made especially for dealing with ink, so they are very, very dense, yet really, really detailed to get that lovely work um, in there as well. So if you think about what you've got here, so you've got the craft mat, you've got the round tool and the square tool with its refills, you've got the fine spray misters, you've got the mini blending sponges, you've got the, um, the palette and the brayer, which is great for putting um, ink onto backgrounds, for making inky, messy backgrounds as well, which is really, really cool. You're getting all of that for £30 or $40. It's a really, really great bundle, actually, and it gets you a lot of those tools that you will use, because, listen, if, even if you haven't got one of these so far, 
even if you haven't got an ink blending tool so far, you can use that with pretty much every one of the inks that we do. That's right, Craig, isn't it, pretty much? Yeah, you can do. Yeah. yeah. And what I do is you can get them inexpensively, you know, online, but the little Velcro dots. So I just put one of the actual positives on the back of our ink pads. And then what I just do is because you've already got like the negative effect already there, then I just actually just uh, attach it that way. And then you've got the same tool. So we're not using a tool for every single pad we're just using a foam pad for every single one and that just keeps it you know so you've got the same one each time it's a nice easy way of doing it it's brilliant it's a brilliant idea um the the oh hang on here's another username on youtube the aero mama 2 on youtube asks is the flaky salt a uk item no it isn't um i don't think so and i think you pretty, pretty much be able to get that around the world it's um you call it rock salt sometimes, sometimes yeah. you call it sea salt. It's the kind of salt that if you have a salt mill, like a grinder, um, it's the kind of um, salt, like mini boulders, I guess, that you put into your salt grinder before you start grinding. So anything with that kind of consistency um, in salt will work. Um, but if not, I'm sure you will be able to buy it online. Um, I would imagine, but I'd imagine it's a, that you get a lot of it around the world. So you will find it in your stores. In fact, you'll find it in your value stores. We find it in a lot of value stores here. You quite often be able to buy one of those little salt grinders very, very inexpensively. Sometimes at the supermarket, actually. You can, buy, you can buy things like that, Craig, can't you? Yeah, that's where I've got mine. But also think about, you're wanting to see what actually absorbs product. So I've used oats before, you know, so if you've got any porridge oats or that, I've used them. What about rice as well? You know, it doesn't uh, absorb it as much, but it still absorbs it to a point where it could look quite effective. So think of little things like that that you could be using, you've maybe got around, uh, around the house. Actually, um, little you just give me an idea. Actually, you know we're talking about porridge oats. Yes. Um, also, the little we call them rice krispies um, here, but that little puffed rice cereal. I wonder if that would work the same way, particularly if you sprayed after you'd put it down, sprayed it because that makes them more absorbent. Yeah, you know, give it a shot. You know, it's only a bit of a uh, bit of cardstock, and trust me, your inks will last you so long because you're the way you're laying it down. You know, you're not putting a lot of actual colour down, and then if you are spritzing it, you are bringing in your water and your paintbrush. Then that's just make when it really make it last even longer. So give it a shot. Right, lovely. Which one are we doing now, then, Craig? Right here, we're going to use the peony bouquet for this one just here. So what we're going to do is, we're going to run this one uh, through in a moment, but again, we're going to be using the aqua inks. Now, this one is a nicely fresh, unopened pack. So I always uh, I always hate opening new packs. You know, it's like when you get your actual plates for your Gemini and you cut into it for the first time. <laughs> it's like, oh. So it's, I say, uh, I don't like it in a, in a good way. You know what I mean? It's a nice way. Yeah. But what we've got is we've got a cardstock. On this one, I've just actually used a smooth cardstock, so it's not a water cardstock that I'm using for this one. So what I'm then just going to do is I'm going to then just spritz my uh, tool. What have I done with it? Here we are. So I've got my spritz laying. I'm going to bring in my pipette as well. So I've got one. And... Oh, Alison on Facebook, just very quickly while you're fishing, Craig. Um, Alison says... My husband makes Brussels sprouts with bacon, garlic and oil and there's never any left over. That sounds quite nice, doesn't it? Bacon, garlic and oil. I'm guessing that'll be olive oil, I'm guessing. It does sound quite nice. If you've got any recipes to make Brussels sprouts edible, I'd love to hear about them, definitely. Or anything else that, that you would avoid or try and change at Thanksgiving or Christmas that you normally don't like at all? How do you adapt it to make it suit you? I would love to know. Have you found what you were looking for, Craig? I have, I have indeed. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be using the uh, little palette that we've got as well. So the, the um, what's it called again? Palette. A palette, palette, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fix and palette, yeah, I was right after all. <laughs> and then what I'm gonna do, what did I do with my inks now? What have I done with them? I have no idea, they Craig. Disappeared. They were on the glass map that was dirty that you took away. That, uh, no, they weren't they were actually, gone. were they? No, they weren't. I so, don't know. Right, fallen leaves, here we go. Go back to the fallen leaves for this one. So we're going to use the sage and we'll also use the harvest moon. So what I'm going to do is spritz some. So we're going to do something a bit similar like earlier on when we actually done the uh, pipettes so that the actual colour's run, running down. But we're going to go it straight on. So instead of actually laying any colour down first, we're just going to bring in our actual uh, inks. 
And then what I'm going to do is let's take this one. I'm going to add a little color just into there. And then what I'm going to do is take in our green or our sage. We're going to do exactly the same into this one here. Now this is where we're on about, why not uh, try mixing them? Now obviously the deeper the color, you know, you're going to get more browns and blacks, mm -hmm. gray sort of mm -hmm. uh, effect. But if I just bring out a little bit of color onto that one there, and then let's just even bring in, actually let's just show you. If we bring in, let's go for the afternoon tea, and then let's bring in the biscuit, I think it's biscuit, is it? Yeah, the biscuit on this one. And again, this is then going to show you how you can mix them up and you get a different tone. So and let's it, take... You see the thing is from above, no matter which colour you're looking at, you almost can't distinguish what the colour no. is. Because actually when the ink is pulled like that, they all look so deep and so dark. It's only when you mix them with water and you get them onto card that you go, oh my word, like they are so, so vibrant. That's what I was saying to you about the spun gold earlier as well. Because in, in the pot, you kind of think, oh, it's really not going to look right. And when you put it down onto the paper, you're like, oh my word, that's amazing. I've just, I've just brushed real gold onto my card. Honestly, you need to get them home to see them. Now look how yellowy great, I'm not sure if you can quite see it on that one just there. You've got a completely different tone. That was mixing the sage with the biscuit on that one there. So uh -huh. have a play with your colours. See what you want to use, see what tones look well together. If in doubt, then again, it's just a little big bit of ink that you've wasted. But then what you can just do is come along with your spritz tool, take a bit of scrap card that you've got and then dab it in and then move it to the side and you can be using that as a background elsewhere. In I, was, your... I was thinking earlier, Craig, like uh, you could almost do the reverse, couldn't you? So you could do your dropping onto the mat, spray the water, let that spread the ink and then take the card to the ink, could you? Tell you what. Because you seen... do that a couple of times, couldn't you? Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, seeing as earlier on, I'd done that technique where we just spritz along the top and then we let the ink just fall down. Yeah. Let's do it this way. Let's do exactly what you've just said a minute ago, Derek. Let's just bring in, so let's go for the uh, harvest moon. So all that I'm just going to do is just do a few bits of ink droplets all the way down. Again, this is now another technique we could be using our uh, glass mat or our um, wipeable mat. And then what I'm just going to do is just going to just use the pets. Now we're just going to use our spritzing tool yeah. and we're just going to really spritz our ink. We're going to get that colour laid down. So I've got another one that's got water in. <laughs> You've been playing so much. He's, uh... That's how it's going dry. <laughs> there we go. So then we're just going to really submerge that ink Look within the that. colour and then actually let's just add just a little bit more uh, let's go for a bit more of the harvest moon and we're just going to just let's just get that going and Three harvest moon is naturally which colour Craig so that's from the fallen leaves right so the harvest moon is is like um it's like an orangey yes type. orange isn't it? it's almost like a pumpkin colour isn't it it is it really really is what I'm just going to do here I'm just going to dab this excess off because I'm the only thing I'm concerned about is if I put my cardstock into that bit there, I'm going to get a real splodge yeah. of colour. Yeah. And, you know, it could work and it you know, potentially would work, but I want you to see how, uh, how effective it'd be if you do a technique like this. So then all that I'm just going to do is I'm just going to actually pop my card in. Now, you will get inky. You can wear gloves <laughs> if you want. But then look at that. Again, it's a bit like your um, lava. You've got your lava just coming yeah. through there. You know, it could be desert. You know, you can be getting your dem uh, desert storm effect. But then what I'm going to do is, let's see. Now, I've actually, I've only got the large bubble wrap here. What you could also do is, a bit like the actual salt technique, you can pop your bubble wrap on, and then we're just going to hold it in place. I don't have one dry because obviously I'm doing this one just off the yeah. roof on here. But can you can you see within the actual bubbles here, you can see how it's actually collected the deeper tones. Yeah. So what would happen is you would then leave that to dry and then if you peel that one off, so you can see on that one, you Ooh. get, it's a bit like your pineapple effect. Yeah. But what would happen is if you left that to dry, you would, these would all become little rings. Yeah. You get different effect rings because you've left it to dry, it's soaked into the fibres of the cardstock. So then you would get that effect just there. So what I'm going to do is let's move that one to the side. And then I'm just going to get some more just bits of cardstock just here. Now, we could use our guillotine. We've got the guillotine on the show as well. 
But all that I would just do is just keep... It's on our next show, isn't it? It's it not is, on this yeah. one, it's on it's the next one. It's our hero one. tool in the next show. But you can shop for it now. You can do. You can do. But there we go. So just keep going and you get lots of different effects, you know. So we're going to move that one just there. And then we're just going to keep going. Keep going. And you're going to keep on going. The more that you do it, the more effective that it's going to look. The more different tones that you're going to get coming through. The more different actual shapes, designs that you can start to see popping through. So if we keep going and keep going and keep going. And we'll do it. Oh, I'm putting that out of the way again. So that will dry like that. A bit more muted. But then let's just bring in a little bit more cardstock. Oh, Craig, just very, very quickly. I won't ask you to demonstrate it because you'll make it very inky. <laughs> and that... <laughs> It'll be dirty for the whole day then. Uh, but the guillotine is on the shop the show for this show as well with a 20% saving as well. So that makes it uh, just £19.99 or $27.96. So grab that quickly um, if you've wanted one for a wee while and haven't got round to getting one yet. Oh, now look at that. Now look at this. Now this is simply by constantly laying the cardstock down and each time just making it go that little bit further by using the spritzing tool. And that's all that is. It's just water in there. So you can see instantly from this first one, so if I bring this one in, so we've got that effect there. Now, you would leave the bubble wrap on and yeah. let it dry, you know, then you'll still be left with the bubbles. That's kind of just soaked into the fibres on that one. But then that was the second one that we've done. And then that was the next one that we've done. And then we've done this one here. So you can see it gets lighter and lighter. But keep going. Leave them dry. These can then be your backgrounds. You, know, you could use these for your die cuts. Think about pattern papers that you've got at home and you see that sort of effect that you're getting. Do it yourself now at home. So um, Craig, just so very, very quickly, V. Renee Whitley on uh, Facebook is asking, um, would the bath salts work for, instead of the... Um, sea salt as long as it's quite thick granules you know you want it to be thick granules because what you don't want is for it to be really really fine and then what's just going to happen is it's just going to soak into your your ink or your water on your cardstock so it has to be something that's really quite thick oh hang on i've got some controversy i have maxine marmite loving cave on facebook says Sprouts roasted in Marmite. Ooh la la, are amazing. What do you think of that, Craig? No. Sprouts in Marmite. Although I will say I have to at least eat one sprout at Christmas. I Just do, so you I have. I do force myself to eat at least one. I, see, I, I, actually, I don't mind them. They've got to be cooked, but I, I don't mind them too much. I don't, your taste buds change, don't they, as you get a little bit older. Uh, jarmaine has got a better idea on Facebook, and this sounds lovely. Brussels sautéed with garlic and mushrooms and onions. So good. Oh, here's another one from René on Facebook, who says, I cut Brussels sprouts in half, drizzle with olive oil and mix with seasoning, then bake. As they're baking, I sauté onions and mushrooms. When the sprouts are done, add the mushrooms and onions to the sprouts in a bowl, and then grate a sejo cheese on top, which sounds like parmesan. Mm. That sounds nice, doesn't it? I would it? give it a shot. I would absolutely give it a that shot. Sounds all right, doesn't it? See, I always think when, when you've got a vegetable you don't like, add fruit to it. Cranberry, <laughs> cranberries or you know, jumbo raisins or something like that cooked in or sour cherries cooked in with the sprouts. Um, shred them up, that just makes them a bit more palatable. It makes them sweeter. Throw honey on anything, any vegetable, and it'll pretty much pretty much make it nicer. I, I see, I love Marmite. Marmite, we get it here in the UK. I guess you get it in the in the US as well. Um, and Sarah, I think you call it Vegemite down, down under, don't you? Um, yeast expert. I love it. I could have it an inch thick on everything, but it's not everyone's. It's one of those love it or hate it things. I take it you're a hater, Craig, are you? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not a fan of it. Not a fan at it's all. It's nice, I like it. Um, Anne's, Anne's wondering if the shaving foam's coming out at all today, uh, Craig. 
Uh, not on this show, but absolutely you can completely do that technique using the shaving foam if you want with the uh, aqua tints. So all that you would then just do is do what you would do with the Azure shaving foam. Just spray that and just fill up, you know, a little box, a little container. Using the pipettes, you're just going to dot the actual ink over the shaving foam. And then what you're going to do is then just lay your cardstock over the top. And then that is then going to give you a really nice random marble effect. And Deborah, uh, uh, sorry, Craig, Deborah. Deborah's just asking very, very quickly uh, just for you to just confirm again the card stock that you're using in these uh, ink demos. So all of them, apart from this one, all of them are uh, water, uh, are water cardstock or are watercolor cardstock. But this one here, I've used a smooth cardstock simply to show you that if you don't have watercolor card, but you're desperate to get into doing a bit of ink, and you can use your uh, smooth cardstock as well. But your best result is always going to come from your watercolor card. So which folder was this again? It's not yet apparent. So this one is the uh, peony. Ah, cool. Peony right. folder. This is this is now back in the lead as well. So it's 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 kind of been a tussle between this and the vine, the uh, yeah the ivy, climbing ivy. Oh, and the butterfly because everyone loves a butterfly, don't they? So I've taken my water reactive ink. So this one's the red berry. I'm also using the grasshopper and the honey pot. So with the red berry, what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to just pick up some areas of the peony. So just some of these ones. And what I'm kind of doing is, uh, we can see just there from up above, I'm kind of really only uh, adding the ink to the top bit or I know it's looking like I've covered the whole lot, but when I'm actually laying the pressure down, I'm just kind of doing it at a bit of an angle. Uh -huh. So I'm only using one end of the foam pad tool, and then I'm just starting to pick up some of the color. So you can see just it there, we'll go perfectly. You can see how I'm just doing it at a bit of an angle just there. So I'm just picking up that one there. Then let's go into the middle of the peony on this one. And I'm not being precise. No, it doesn't matter. You're having to get it in certain embossed areas. I'm just going right into the middle of each of these peonies. Got another quick question for you, uh, Craig. Eleanor um, uh, is asking, is there any difference between the aqua tint and the sparkling? She knows that one has sparkle in, obviously, but are they, uh, in essence, are they the same inks? Yeah. So yeah. exactly what you do with the sparkle, you can do with the aqua tints and vice versa. But it's exactly what you just said there. The only difference really is the fact of one has sparkle and one doesn't. I mispronounced the cheese. It's it's pronounced Arciago. Ar I've never heard of that. Do we have that here? I've never heard of that either. No. Arciago. Uh, she's actually written it for me. Arciago. Oh. Thank you, Jancy. No, um, I've never I haven't pronounced that correctly as well. <laughs> Never heard of that one. I haven't either. What is it like? Is it like another cheese that we might know? Because we don't, we, well, we do have quite a lot of cheeses over here, don't we? But I've never heard of RC Argo. Never heard of that one. RC Argo. No, no. I tend to just stick to like the, the mild cheeses. Any strong ones give me headaches. So I tend to stick to the mild cheeses. A bit of an Edam man, are you? I, I, do you know something? I don't think I've tried. I have tried. I have tried it. Actually, I've um, had it a lot. Bake Off this week was '80s week, <laughs> and a, actually, Edam cheese, which is the round one covered in the red wax, the like the big one. You know, have the you have the mini baby bells, don't you? Um, but these were like full, like bowling ball size um, cheeses, which were covered in red wax from Holland, and it was pretty tasteless, to be honest. To be fair. Not the greatest. Can't believe in I the missed 80s. that. I forgot it was on. I used to I used to have Edam and pickled sliced pickled onion sandwiches back in the 80s. Mm. Oh, happy days. Used to have them at New Year on a cocktail stick. You'd have a cocktail oh, pickled stick. onions, the little yeah, silver onions. skin ones. Yeah, yeah, silver skin pickled onions. Yeah, that's a you good thing to bring out at Christmas. Isn't pineapple, it? Yeah. maybe a gherkin or a bit of ham or a bit of cheese. Yeah, and yeah. you'd have an orange, wouldn't you, wrapped up in tin foil, and you'd put them in cocktail sticks. Yeah. Oh, it was it was the height of sophistication back then. If you weren't around in the eighties, you don't know what you've missed. You don't know what you've missed. Um, are you an eighties child, Craig? No, I don't think you are. Are you? Oh, I was more 85. of a knife. 85. Were you born in 85? I was born in 85. So, yeah, so you, did, you, so you, were, you were in a... So all that I'm doing, I think your mic's gone, Derek. So all that I'm just doing there 
is I've just laid the colour. So on some areas of the peony, I've gone with the red berry. Then in other parts, I've gone with the honey pot. And then just where it comes to the leaves and the foliage, I've gone with the green. And then I've just taken my jet black water reactive and just very, very lightly, just going straight over the top, I've just lightly just gone round with my ink pad. And then what that's going to do is really pull out the detail of the uh, 3D embossed peony. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring in my bit of black cardstock and my tape runner. And I'm just going to go all the way around the edges. And then what I'm just going to do is just layer this one on. I need to actually trim this one down first. So let's go for, let's bring in the guillotine for this one. And then so my black layer was four and a quarter by six and a quarter. Now I need to be careful because I've already popped my adhesive on here. I'm back again. That's the second set of batteries I've taught flat, Craig. Yeah, I think you need some new ones, don't, don't you? Dodgy ones. Yeah. And to be fair, that wasn't my fault that time because I couldn't get across to you, so yeah, well, can't blame me for this one. They're the ones that Craig's been selling them off cheap to try and make a few extra quid at Christmas <laughs> out, out the back of his car, I think that's what it is. Got to it, pay for my present somehow. Ex well, exactly, you see. Christmas has got to be paid for one way or the other. Do you want to know more about RC Argo? Yeah. Uh, it's uh, one of our social media superstars has given me a full explanation. Uh, it's cow's milk cheese, first produced in Italy, um, can have different textures according to its ageing, from smooth, from the fresh, to the crumbly texture for the age. So it sounds a little bit like goat's cheese. It does actually, bit. yeah. That sounds very nice. Oh, hang on. Um, Jancy says it's very similar to Parmesan, just like you okay. thought, Derek. Very, very nice. Got Love to have that. a bit of uh, Parmesan on your spag Ooh, bowl. Yeah, on ev well, on everything. Yeah. Not too fine grated though. You need you need a proper, like a vegetable peeler. You oh, need to get peelings of it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you need to have the, the shavings, don't you? Yeah, because when, it, when it's like dust, it doesn't, it's just not right, Craig. It's not right. That's beautiful. So we've gone for a, a real yeah. uh, deep vintage, you know, this would be good for maybe like your mixed media text and techniques and that as well. Yes. So with the having the black there, we've gone for the aqua tints, we've gone for a bit of water reactive, and then the black really pulls out the top layers of your 3D embossing folder. So we're going from bright to pastels to dark, you know, really mixing it up. I absolutely love that, Craig. I think it's brilliant. And actually, I was just thinking back to, um, you know, we've got um, clarity and I think we've got some um, some parchment. In fact, let me just double check that what we've got because I've got my cards here for creative cravings uh, for later. And we, and we are doing, oh, we might not have any stock left by the time we get to it, but we have got a, a parchment pack, a groovy green um, parchment pack. Um, there's a set of A4 parchment paper. There's some A5 parchment paper. There's a... a so say again, Johnny. 10 to 15 only. Oh, okay. A lot of them have sold out, actually. Uh, we've got a Groovy Plate starter kit, which I'll be looking forward to showing you, actually, if we, if we still have any stock left by then. Um, there's also a Gardens Burden Cherry Blossom with a mask stamp set as well from Clarity. But if you like your parchment, I would go and shop the show. We might not actually get to show it to you this afternoon um, in Creative Cravings. Don't forget, by the way, just a very, very quick reminder. It's Win It Wednesday today as well. So if you go to our Facebook page or our Instagram, um, for Crafters Companion. You will see the Win It Wednesday um, thing there. All you need to do is comment on that and tell us your favourite die or your favourite stamp. That's all you need to do. And you've got hundreds to choose from, haven't you? Let's face it. Um, you could win either a £50 or a $50 voucher to spend with us here at Crafters Companion. So that's definitely worth doing. That's a really lovely prize, actually. It's a really, really cool. I'd love my account to be $50 or £50 in credit. That'd be awesome. Anyway, back to your folders. Let's go through them individually, shall we, then? You've got the complete collection details there for you. £32 or £40. Six dollars, which is brilliant. That gets you all six of the folders, which is brilliant. So this is the Gossamer Lace, which is really, really cool. That's the one that looks a little bit like a uh, paisley, which is really, really beautiful. You've also, oh, sorry, should I go back to that one quickly? We're just going to get you the details individually. Um, remember, they are a multi-buy as well, so only two for twelve pounds or sixteen dollars. So that's the Gossamer Lace. That's the first one. Then we've got the leopard print which is brilliant these are all 3d embossing folders as well by the way so even that one even though it's difficult to see 
as well as the leopard print which jumps out into the foreground you have got a little bit of texture in the background as well which is brilliant uh, which adds just a little bit of extra depth and, and dimension that'd be awesome for celebrations and birthdays wouldn't it as well um, and definitely make sure you get your gilding waxes in in conjunction if you haven't got them already you they make the world of difference because look at this one for instance which is the vintage scroll one which is really really lovely so you see that vintage scroll in the foreground there with those lovely soft feathery edges Edges, but this is actually done onto a green pearlescent card so you've got green and gold working there together so you could use this with just as Craig said earlier with your adorable scorable um, with your um, uh, Centura pearl card very very easily and then just go over the gilding waxes on the top here's your favorite here's your favorite it's been your favorite pretty much all day uh, bar one little interruption um, it's your peony bouquet again beautiful because again this is gold gilding wax on the top layer of the embossing there and in the background you can see this is against a lovely pink pearlescent card and it's got that lovely soft lattice in the background so that's your most popular today and closely followed by climbing ivy see again that color combination this is onto green pearlescent card with the gold gilding wax. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, that would make a perfect Christmas combination. But as Craig said earlier, add a nesting die to the center of that and maybe put a photo in behind it. Uh, maybe use the embossing folder to emboss onto a photo if the, the image appears perfectly in the middle. You could combine two worlds there, couldn't you? Which would be awesome. And you've also got the Grande Butterfly, which again is beautiful because can you see just how much detail there is in the in the wings in the lace of the wings i think that would be lovely um done onto acetate i found, i wonder actually if you if you just embossed that onto acetate and went over with your gilding wax on top excuse me i wonder what kind of effect you would get um with that i think that would be awesome don't you that's one to give a try um too or you could do it on some um aluminum um foil couldn't you or something like that or copper plate, do, can you, you can do it onto copper plate as well, can't you? If, if it's sort of, the gauge is low enough. Yeah, yeah, what you can yeah. also do is your fizzy drink cans as well. Oh, of course. So yeah, obviously, you know, yes. if you're cutting the top off, do be careful, yeah. but then when you run that through, you show any of your fizzy drink can, yeah, any craft metals, anything like that, or take your double-sided adhesive sheet, add your tin foil over the top, and then you can be embossing that as well, and it gives you a full metal look. Fabulous. Quick look at the gilding waxes then. We only have three out of the ordinary five that we have because the others are all sold out. And I'm not surprised because we did some amazing birthday deals with these and that has left us shy of stock. So the ones that we have remaining, we've got on 25% saving. So there is antique gold, £8.99 or $12.74. Same price for the gold, so you can see the difference between the antique and the gold is very, very different. Gold is more like a nine carat gold, a lighter, brighter gold. And then we also have the Renaissance gold as well. And the Renaissance gold is like that lovely, deep, sort of antique slightly coppery gold as well. They are absolutely beautiful. And to be honest with you, when it comes to gilding waxes, if you've ever fancied doing them or getting one, you know, one of those gilding waxes is going to last you and last you and last you. Because if you think about it, you literally, you have a little tiny bit on the end of your finger, don't you? That's all you need to go over, even a big, big embossing folder area. You can see, I mean, Craig just pops his finger in there, pops it onto the glass mat, and you're literally using that little fingertip end to go over a whole embossing folder. It's really, really cool. Um, keep your comments coming in, by the way. Don't forget to check out Win, Win It Wednesday, which is on our Facebook page and on Instagram as well, because you could well be winning a £50 or a $50 voucher to spend with us here at Crafters Companion. And all you need to do is find the Win It Wednesday post and just tell us the name of your favourite stamp or die. It's as simple as that. Have we got time for a quick one, Craig? We do indeed. So with this one, we're going to use the afternoon tea for a very pastel effect with this one here. And we're going to use a Grossamere folder for this one. So we're just taking my uh, packaging ranks. We're using the Grossamere lace for this one. Really nice, elegant one. I think this is probably, when it comes to elegance, this is certainly the one. So what I'm going to do is just take in some water and my paintbrush again, watercolour card for this one, and then we're just going to just lay the water down. So we're just going over the top watercolour card, we're using our large paintbrush, and again just water within here. So if we just start to lay this one down, we're going to then go back 
to the pipette. So keep in mind you do get these within your actual boxes of your aquatints. So we're just going to pop these ones. So we're just going to actually take that bit of ink off my hands. So if we then go for and this one, so we've got the olive jade, and then we're just going to use our macaroon, and then we're also going to use our teacup. And then what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to just lightly, lightly Whoa. just press. It's like fire, fireworks, isn't it? It is. And the more water that you use, the more effect that you're going to get when it comes to this one. Now, all that I'm just going to do is just to kind of keep my cardstock down. I'm just going to, you could use your finger, but then obviously you'll get a bit of a finger mark within the middle. Yeah. And all that this is doing is this is just going to keep it flat just now, because otherwise the ink would run to the sides. Yeah. That looks nice and that is a good technique, but I don't want that to happen. So I'm just going to just keeping it flat. And then I'm just going to go over the top. Doesn't matter if you kind of overlap. And then let's go for, I'm going to just add a little bit of the uh, olive jade. I don't want too much because if this then interacts with the other colors like it is, you'll start to get a real kind of um, a, a browny, dirty kind yeah. of color. Yeah. Which again, this isn't really the type of uh, effect that I'm wanting. So if I just take my take uh, this one just here and then all that I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, spritz with water so I'm just going to pop this one just with a bit of, bit of water um, now what uh, Adam in my ears just said and I'm actually going to um, answer this question because it's a good one now you could do this effect on your actual uh, magnetic platform what Adam's asking is could you use the magnetic discs to hold it down you could but what you need to keep in mind then is you're going to be left with circle dots where the ink's not got to now if you're going to trim your cardstock down that would be absolutely fine mm -hmm. but for this size here if I had metal discs on then what's going to happen is I'm going to be left with kind of like four half circles yeah so you want. could start like six by nine or something like that and have yes. them on the outside inch and then cut them down to five by seven for the folder yep uh, you could definitely do that because uh, I love this kind of like feathery look that we've got on this. I, think, I just think it's awesome. And then all that I'm just doing is I'm just taking kitchen roll. And because this kitchen roll's got a bit of texture to it, I'm just dabbing it off. And then what I'm also doing is, the reason I've just put little bits of green, again, because it's texture, what's happening is it's picking up the green and it's also just transferring onto some of the blue areas and some of the uh, red areas as well. So you've got that kind of textured look. And then what I'm going to do is, let's just dry this one off. So let's just take our kitchen roll. Keep in mind, every time I'm using the kitchen roll to lift any of that excess ink off, when I'm at home, what I would be doing is using my cardstock, dabbing that excess yeah. off, and then once it's dry, I can be using it for other projects. You're creating your own background effects. So, you know, that, um, that looks like now, that colour combination that Craig's using, um, it looks now like a, um, like a big woolly um, polar fleece from like the 70s or 80s, you know what I mean? Doesn't it? Like a knitted jumper kind of look, isn't it? It's really, seen, really cool. I mean, obviously I wasn't around then, but I do remember- Oh yeah, you were in a pram then, that. weren't you? Yeah, I was. The yeah. blanket covering you up in your crib might have been like that, Craig. Might have been. You never know, up might there in cold, been. bonny Scotland. Um, I've just had a quick idea as well from um, Jancy has said that the leopard print embossing folder would look really, really good uh, with the giraffe peekaboo die as well. So you could emboss and then you could add your peekaboo um, onto the animal print, couldn't you? In fact, you could do that with a lot of the peekaboos, couldn't you? That would look be awesome, Craig, wouldn't it? Aha, hello. We've read his mind again, look. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Wow, well, look I had that. no idea. And I am not surprised. This is uh, from Nicole Frederick on our team, who's actually in our current uh, edition of uh, Crafters Inspiration. So I'm not surprised because I uh, can't rave about her enough. Good I work, feel, Nicole. The full team is just incredible. Oh, they are. But, you know, seeing the things that Nicole makes is awesome. 
I would let this dry just a little bit longer, but obviously I know we've only got a couple of minutes left. God, if that's that. gone quick, Craig, it's isn't gone it? It's gone so quick, hasn't it? So quick. So I'm just going to run this one through, base cutting plate, magnetic and plastic shim. And then instead of using gilding wax, what I'm going to do is I've just taken some crushed velvet, water reactive inks, and then I'm just going to wipe this down quickly. And then I'm just going to apply some of the ink. So what I've already done beforehand is I've gone with the black in the last demo, gone straight over the top. So you can do that or just take your blending tools and we're just going to lay the colour down that way. So you're just going to be blending, or I'm saying blending, we're only using the one colour, but you could then just be laying down the colour like you would be doing if you were going straight onto flat cardstock. The only difference is this time, we've got some of the debossed area. So again, what's happening is, because you've got the sponge, the sponge on the top layer is picking up all of the top layer of the 3D embossing, but then you've got that softness, softness of the sponge, which is then just starting to kind of um, cuddle or caress the other areas underneath of your embossed detail. So if we just pick out some more, and then we're just going to go all the way around, and then I'm going to go into the middle, because you've got all of this crisscross texture detail within the middle as well. So we're just going to bring that one in you can then go around a lot more heavy handed add in more depth if you wanted to as well don't forget what you can also do is if you've got our as i call it our sticky ink our watermark ink use that one and then use your embossing powders and then that's another effect that you're going to get have a look to see what you've got in your stash and would you apply that in the same kind of way with the blending tool craig so you can do two ways. You can either do the letter press technique that I've done where you actually just lay the sticky ink onto your embossing folder. Uh -huh. So pop it onto your embossing folder. So just let's just put it in over conscious of time. Just use your sticky ink, go over onto your embossing folder like that. Yeah. Then what you would do is sandwich your cardstock in, run it through. Then when you take it out, all of that impression would have that sticky ink. So just actually sprinkle your embossing powder on, then heat it then you've got that effect. Alternatively, just actually emboss it, do what I've just done, is go over the top, and then you're just going to sprinkle it, and then that's where you're going to get all that uh, embossed detail that is now going to be all uh, heat embossed. Oh, I tell you what, I tell you what, because we've got, uh, I'm sure you've heard about it, but here in the UK we've got Lockdown 2, the sequel, which is bound to be rubbish, because uh, <laughs> sequels always are, aren't they? Um, We've got it coming on um, Thursday for about three or four weeks. Um, but that means we've got more crafting time, which is actually quite a good thing, isn't it? it? Is. We've got to hunker and, uh, down. Can I just say as well, Derek, and the only reason I'm referencing this is because I've had quite a few comments asking, I'm not going anywhere. I'm still going to be here. I'm not going in isolation or anything like that. So just instead of replying to all these comments, I just thought, because yeah. you've brought it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I appreciate the concern, uh, but no, I'm not going anywhere. He's all right with us. We'll look after him. Don't you worry. It's fine. We can't, we can't let him go. And, we, and just to let you know as well, just to reassure you, um, barring all things, um, Crafters TV will be here one way or yeah. another, even though we're having a lockdown. Obviously, we, we have been for the, um, for the first lockdown, which was months. Uh, this one is only a few weeks in comparison, but um, we are still allowed to come to work. So that's fine. We will still be with you um, on a daily basis, which is really, really cool. So, just a couple of finishing touches here, Craig. There we go. So I've just added a bit of ribbon and a bow all the way right. Just one of my sentiments. But then if I bring this in for you to see. Beautiful. So instead of using gilding wax, I've just used the crushed velvet of the water reactive. And then there we go. It picks out the detail, but you've got all of that of colour in the background. Have you still got that other card that you made earlier, the orangey one, Craig? Have you still got that one around? Uh, I will do. The, what, the leopard print? Yeah, the first one that you made, because that's so, so cool. Just in case you missed the demo for that one, look. Look at this. That one. So, so awesome. There. And then just another toy, so the one that Nicole has made. Beautiful. You see how different they can look. Well, listen, if you missed anything, oh, actually, uh, just before we go, um, Susan Rushton, hello, lovely Susan. She says, uh, I plan to use the leopard print embossing folder with the Arizona purse die. Good plan. Oh, yeah. Good plan, because you could emboss and then construct, couldn't you? Which would be awesome. Um, Deborah Lafleur, 
uh, on YouTube. I love your names on YouTube. I know I said that every time, but they are amazing. Love the bubble wrap technique and I've got loads of it. Listen, um, if you missed any of the show, now is your opportunity. You've got a one hour window to catch up with anything that you missed. Maybe get your inks out and start. Have a little go. And, and then let us know how you get on. Send us pictures later. We are back in an hour with Creative Cravings. New set of cards will be here in an hour. Uh, and we've got, oh yes, it's the confetti boxes and so, so much more. Plus, um, we are gonna have a little bit more of an in-depth look while, well, when Craig has been de-inked um, of the guillotine, the small guillotine, which we'll be looking at in a little bit more detail. It's gonna be our hero tool this afternoon, but we've got lots more besides, plus the clearance on Clarity Stamp as well. If there is anything left, go and shop the show now. See you back here with Craig in an hour. See you there.